So welcome to the third uh, All SIGs meeting uh, here at uh, Bangkok. Uh, the first was at Bangkok, the second was at Geneva, and third we are back to Bangkok. Um, as you're aware, uh, this meeting is to bring together all the SIGs, uh, provide some updates, uh, discuss issues that are of relevance to all of us, uh, and give a structure to this whole initiative. That is roughly what we're trying to do in this meeting. So we will have initially a bunch of updates from different uh, SIGs, some of them outside our region, several of them are online, and we hope that uh, our online uh, participation will go without any glitch as uh, in the last several days. Uh, generally, everything has been going smooth uh, this time. Uh, we will then spend about half an hour for all SIG organizational matters. And then we'll have uh, discussions on several cross-cutting issues, uh, which include internet shutdowns, youth and SIGs, which have been already, we have had some discussions, gender and SIGs, which again uh, is a new topic. And we will, from there, move on to a broader gender discussion for about 30 minutes, uh, which... Uh, several uh, women have proposed during this meeting. Uh, and we are scheduled to close at 17.30. We might go over to 17.45. Hopefully, 17.45 we'll close. Now, to begin, we have a special presentation from our friend from Middle East, uh, Abdul Hamid Al-Rahman. So uh, we do not want to use the podium. Can you sit there and present? We'll give you a mic. You can take that mic. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Abdul Hamid. I'm from Jordan. Currently, I'm Director General for MTC. In the past, I was Director General for National Information Technology Center in Jordan, which is uh, uh, mainly responsible for uh, all technology in Jordan. Uh, I will talk about uh, uh, Arab IGF. In a brief, our agenda will be introduction, organizational structure, Arab roadmap on internet governance, strategic priorities for the Arab region, IAGF uh, meeting, the achievements of IAGF goals. Next slide, please. The Arab IGF uh, governance forum was established in 2012 within the framework of the Regional Roadmap Initiative, Arab Roadmap 1, which was introduced in 2010. Next slide, please. The Arab uh, Internet Governance uh, was established under the joint umbrella of the LAS, League of Arab State, and uh, ISQA in the light of their roles in the Roadmap Initiative for Internet Governance in the Arab region. The ISQA most likely is uh, involved with all uh, internet governance in our region, and it became uh, also involved in everything uh, in Arab IGF uh, once it is inception. The component the principle of internet governance, methodology for designing, managing, and implementing the roadmap, Priority are areas for the region presented as sub-programs in the log frame. Uh, principle for the internet governments uh, had been changed or shifted uh, from how internet should be to how to deal with the internet uh, according to the continuous internet evolution. Back to the slide. Democratic and collaborative governance, functionality, security, and stability, innovation. Uh, I think internet governance must be support the uh, innovation and the cre uh, creativity in our uh, region, legal and regulatory framework, standardization and interoperability, and accountability of the network, universality of the internet accesses. Next. Arab uh, Roadmap 1 was designed as a log logical framework 
known technically as log frame. Uh, most likely, the the log frame is uh, a tool uh, structuring the main element and highlighting the main element uh, linked with each other. The main element, most likely, the objective, the strategies, the activities, and uh, and others. Next slide. Internet governance priorities and sub-program. Uh, I just want to remind you for the first IGF, uh, which was held in Athens, uh, 2006. The agenda was aware around uh, just security, access, openness, and diversity. Now, enter, uh, now after the 12 years and after the continuous uh, uh, evolution of the internet, we have seen more topics have been added to the agenda like, like uh, cyber security, internet of things. Uh, uh, this year we, we, we see the AI and the, we see the blockchain and hopefully uh, next SIG uh, here we'll see the, uh, we'll see the smart cities as a case study came from India. Next slide, please. Strategic priorities uh, came from uh, Arab Road Map 2. I am uh, very much involved in this. I was part of the team who has published this uh, uh, road map. It was published uh, last year, December uh, 2017, with the meaningful access for inclusion trust and security, institutional empowerment, internet innovation and emerging ecosystem, human development, uh, which is uh, the human right must be offline and online the same, uh, critical internet resources and uh, internet infrastructure, cultural and linguistic diversity must be promoted and respect the diversity in all forms, not limited to the uh, gender issue and linguistic and cultural. Next. Uh, the Arab IGF meetings, the last one was 2000, uh, 2015, was in Beirut with, under the theme of digital economy for sustainable development. The third one was also in Beirut and enabling environment. The second was in Algeria, partner for development. The first one was in Kuwait, uh, 2012. I attended all uh, Arab IGF uh, meeting except the first one. Uh, the fifth one, next one, uh, hopefully will be uh, before the end of this year. Next week we have uh, a meeting as an, uh, I am part of advisor group for this uh, Arab IGF. Uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll come up with a time and agenda for the next uh, Arab IGF and hopefully to see you all there in our region, and thank you. Thank you very much for that update from the Middle East. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, not seeing any questions, uh, we will now move on. Uh, you are here for the rest of the day, so any questions, you can directly uh, get in touch with him. Uh, we now move on to the updates from the national and regional SIGs. We start with uh, Nepal. We have uh, Ramkant Pandey, who's going to speak. I am Ramkant Pandey, from, representing from NPC Nepal. I am presenting about the status of NPC Nepal. Uh, NPC Nepal was conducted in 1920, January 2018 at uh, Institute of Engineering. This is the leading engineering institute in the Nepal. Uh, for this, about this NPC, we are more focusing on the preparing the workforce, internet governance related workforce in the Nepal and then uh, also motivate to the youth peoples and enhance the capacity about the internet governance related 
stakeholders. Uh, this NPC is organized by Inter Society Nepal chapter and from for digital equality with association of different other organizations, DOIT, Nepal Telecom Authority, ISPAN, CAN Federation, NPNAG, uh, SICT, ITS, BINET, NPIX, and then other global organization, APNIC and APASA. And then we have uh, two media partners uh, living with ICT and ICT firm. Uh, basically, this NP6 more focusing on the capacity enhancement of, uh, about the internet governance issues. And then we, uh, we are planning to create the pool about internet governance related purpose. I always set uh, some objective. First objective is to bring the stakeholder in one pl platform, discussion on ID issue and the process, and then discussion on the different issue on internet governance related issue, uh, activity. Uh, we follow some standard procedure. First, we call the participation, and then select some selection criteria and then I select the different uh, fellows and then communicate between the participants and groups. Uh, for the execution of this NP6, we formulate some community, uh, some committee, uh, advisor, com advisor committee, program committee, finance committee, participation selection and fellowship committee, event management committee. Uh, remote participant uh, management committee, steering com uh, and at last steering committee. This steering committee uh, is the represent from the each uh, different uh, committees. This program committee in this time led by Bhavura Marial. Finance committee led by Vikram Sest. Participant selection and fellowship committee led by Sridhar Rai Madhi. Event management committee myself. Remote management committee managed by Krishna Pokhrel. And this all leader uh, was formatted as a steering committee to execute this NP6. Uh, in this time, we have selected some area to uh, the training and uh, introduction of internet governance, concept and development, the internet governance ecosystem and role play, social, political and cultural aspect, the internet governance, internet governance in Asia Pacific regional experience, Basically, this uh, experience is uh, uh, done by regional uh, initiation. Role of name and numbering system, uh, stakeholder in the governance this is the role play session. Inter governance from the development perspective in ICT and telecom policies is related to policy issues. Uh, we are uh, selecting some emerging issues also blockchain, cryptocurrency, digital economy, uh, new impact on the inter governance, Internet of Things. Artificial intelligence and future of internet governance. Internet governance from the human rights perspective. Uh, and then we organize some lighting, uh, light, uh, light, uh, lighting talk sessions to share the experience on national, regional, and then global IGF issues. Uh, we select some different sectoral area. Uh, government sectors, academic research centers, civil society, NGO, technical communities, and business communities, and the media and journalists, and some other peoples also join this session. Uh, in this uh, NPC, was the 48 participants is there. And gender-wise, 2% the third gender groups. And then uh, 70, uh, 35% is the female and the other remaining the male participant. The uh, representing from the different sector area, technical committee is the 15%, and then academic is the academia is the 20%, media 15%, business committee 23%, government 10%, and the remaining group is the civil society. Uh, this event was convert, uh, covered by different media groups. I mention here a link. And then we print some the manual brochure materials. And then also uh, we have 
uh, official URL, uh, npc.org.nb, all the materials and information available in this site. Thank you. What is the total number of participants? 48. 48? 48. 48. And the gender, what is the? Uh, basically, 35% is the female participant, 2% is the third gender participant, the remaining is the male participant. How many people were there? How many people did you have in the, in the committees that you mentioned? Because I saw like six, seven, eight committees over there. Yes. Uh, this different committee, one uh, each committee have a seven to 11 member is there. This uh, member represent from the different stakeholders, and then each member lead by uh, is, is committee lead by the one coordinator, and then this coordinator also form the steering committee to manage these events. So Amrita has a question uh, on uh, the gender participation in management of the event in the management committees. How many gender? Uh, what this, kind of representation was there? Uh, unfortunately, in this in the management committee, there is no any other female groups and then other uh, groups. All the uh, male, uh, male groups represent from this group. Technically, uh, we permit the management committee or the steering committee uh, to the chair or lead by lead uh, uh, of this uh, different other committee, the committee representatives. Thank you very much, Ramkant. Thank you. Now we move on to. When you do the uh, next year, uh, uh, could you consider to put both IGF and the uh, seed? And uh, I don't know how how do we do both. But uh, uh, say like uh, either you can do the two independent presentation in sequence or the just do as a, as a one whole presentation part one part two and the possibly part three how you are coordinating a SIG and a, uh, IGF because uh, us and also globally we still don't know what's the optimal uh, 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 handling of IGF and uh, SIG, and uh, we have uh, many of those uh, variations. And uh, we probably may be a good idea to keep uh, those uh, record on uh, those, this progress. What you think now may be different from the, what you think in, uh, say, two years later. And which is OK. Just keeping those records, especially in the video, will be nice. So, so you may think, oh my god, in two years, two years ago, we thought in that way. And, uh, and uh, that's the sort of a history. Okay, uh, not, not just you or, or, or anybody. And uh, eventually, I guess we'll come up with two or three set, uh, those uh, uh, model case, and which we don't know as of today. Okay, so the, we sort of uh, let's try this, some different kind of a presentation next year. Okay. Uh, basically, this uh, two event uh, in the behind the these two event have Internet Society Nepal chapter. Uh, then. Stakeholder and then other multi stakeholder group is the different. One uh, event is near to summer season, another event is near to winter seasons. And then uh, basically, we are, uh, we, we, are, we are conducted the IGF in the August and then NPC also in the January. Uh, in, the, uh, in our previous experience, and the IGF have a 467 participants is there, and then uh, 62 different organizations involved in these events. This is the mega events. But uh, this NPC is the capacity enhancement or resource uh, pulling uh, activities. So uh, it is better to organize these uh, two events separately uh, to uh, create the different type of human resources or enhance the capacity of these uh, peoples who conduct this IGF. So always uh, doing this activity, the, the two activities separately. Uh, IGF have different type of uh, different type different type of organizing structures. Uh, 
Uh, in this uh, structures, uh, around uh, 24 different organizations engaged in this time. I don't know how many organizations involved in this year. And then uh, people's uh, different category of the people's came here. Thank you. Thank you very much. This year. We understand the situation there now. So we will now giving you the time. Thank you very much for the thank presentation. You. We will move on to Vakas for the PK Sig presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am representing PK Sig here, uh, being the president of ISOF Islamabad chapter, which is part of the secretariat. Uh, what do I mean by part? I will explain in my next slides. So, PKSEG was devised by a group of like-minded thinkers in the government and civil society in 2015. Um, it was the first. It was the first national um, SEG in Asia Pacific, to the best of our knowledge. Um, and the objective was to integrate capacity building and knowledge dis dissemination on internet governance to students and young professionals. Um, so, first PKSEG was held in Islamabad, and then we sort of we are moving around in the country to the provincial capitals. Uh, we have covered. First of all, the federal capital Islamabad, and then Lahore, then Peshawar, and now the fourth edition would be held in Karachi in September this year. Okay, so what are the objectives? The objectives were to be the pioneer school on IG education and awareness, which we kind of were in on the national level. Uh, we want to provide updated, relevant, and specific knowledge on IG trends. Uh, we want to develop the next generation of internet leaders in Pakistan, which has actually happened. I myself attended PKSEG in 2016 just as a fellow um, and now I'm representing PKSEG two years later here. Um, so we also want to create an active alumni network and we want to, wanted to take the school to every provincial capital in the country which I, we have been able to do so far. As a format and governance, we have a steering committee chaired by Mr. Parvez Iftikhar. He is a, an ICT consultant and an ex-CEO of uh, USF. Um, we have representation from ISO KPAC, ICANN, APNIC, PTA, uh, the Samba chapter, uh, PWDs, Academia, Technical. So we have almost all of the stakeholders covered in the steering committee. Uh, we have a hybrid secretary. This is probably something new. Uh, I'm not sure if any other SIG is doing this, but from this year on, uh, PTA, the government, and the Sama chapter, we are um, going to be the secretariat for PK SIG as a hybrid secretariat where the government and the civil society together is going to manage the affairs of PK SIG. Uh, the, our program is divided into sub baskets where there is an introduction basket, cybersecurity, access and empowerment, digital economy, and other emerging IG issues. Um, so we also have theoretical sessions, but interactive Q&As, real role plays, and discussion forums. Plus, we also give out certificates and fellowships. So the target audience, we this is the school is pretty much open to everybody who is interested in IG. Um, but these are some of the stakeholders that have so far participated in PK Seg, um, and this pretty much covers the whole stakeholders that we are looking at in terms of internet governance. Um, next, uh, yes, so PK 15, it happened in Islamabad. Uh, it was launched by a minister for IT uh, with Chairman PT and Chairman of the HEC, so it was kind of a big thing back then. Um, we had 30 participants, uh, 14 lectures, and one role play class on Friday, on final day. Uh, there are some of the pictures. In 2016, we went to Lahore. Uh, we had 36 participants. And then we had a role play class every day. We saw a good response of that. So we, uh, instead of doing it once in the whole school, we did it every day. And an open discussion session on final day. Um, by the way, the discussions on the final day were summarized into, an, in, into a document and it was circulated between the, uh, at the, in the on the PKSIG mailing list. Uh, so this is 2016. 2017, we went to Peshawar. It is in another provincial capital. We had 26 participants, 20 lectures, a role play class every day, and an open session discussion on the final day. Okay, so um, so we have planned PKS again um, Karachi this year, probably in September. Uh, we expect that the participation level will be higher because it is the biggest city in Pakistan. Uh, and we're also discussing developing program. We have finalized the topics. We just have to translate them into a program, how to 
uh, shift them. So this was gender and youth as I was asked to, um, to include in my presentation. We had 25% female participants and 80% were male. Uh, roughly 70% students are, are, were, were belong, belong to youth. Um, and uh, we, what we have found out is that youth actually identify some of the most relatable and on-ground um, on ground issues that are there in the Pakistani internet environment at the moment. Um, and yes, they want to contribute to internet development. So what are the key takeaways? In uh, the key takeaways, we can say that um, it does produce internet vol volunteers and future leaders. We have personally experienced it through chapter and through other forums. Those people who come to PKSIC, they, they, we have a we have a certain ratio of them who get who, who who retain with the internet governance and actually start contributing through the chapter. Um, the curriculum should be regulated, but updated. Yes, interaction or audience engagement keeps the sessions alive. Uh, it keeps the boredom out of the whole SIG. Uh, if you have interactive sessions and people can talk to each other and do things together. Uh, value, uh, sorry, venue is the key and location. So we have. Uh, we have found this the hard way. We, we, this was our experience. Uh, when we moved a little away from the cap from the main main city area to another school, uh, the participation level started to go down. We have experienced it two times uh, in the last two sigs. So now this time we have we are making sure that we are somewhere in the middle of the city. Yes, the cost goes up, but that but we also need participants to attend. So that is why we are moving to a central location in Karachi this time. Uh, part participation fee waiver is not a big factor to, to attract attendance. Uh, this is one of our experience as well. Uh, yes, fellowships increase the participation rate, but the key thing is the two things. One, sustainability plan is mandatory. You have to know what are you going to do next? How are you going to sustain this financially? And the last thing, after seek opportunities should be prominently highlighted. This is something that we are going to introduce this year. We are going to hold a one session on after seek opportunities. What are the fellowships available? How can you apply for grants? some little um, brief about how to develop a proposal and some things like so there will be one session where you will be doing after seek opportunities for the fellows that are going to attend the pk -SIC. so this is pretty much it from pk -SIC. thank you thank you uh, Vakas. Uh, open for questions and i have uh, actually i have a bunch of questions from amrita for all the sig presentations uh, plus one question from my side uh, amrita is asking if uh, there were gender representation in participation, in management, and curriculum, and speakers, meaning speakers and curriculum. Okay, I don't have the exact percentage for that, uh, but in terms of speakers, I think we had around four female speakers last time around. No, they were, we had three. In 2016, we had four because, because it was Lahore, so it was easy to get the speakers in there. Um, in terms of the uh, participation of the students, I already mentioned that it was 20%. We have we had female uh, participants, and in terms of the organizing committee in PK6 steering committee, we do not have any female yet. Uh, but the chapter is also planning to send our own VP into the PK steering committee so that we can have some female representation on the board. Another question is: uh, Do you have any uh, WhatsApp or email-based lists for alumni to continue their interactions after this thing is over? We do make a WhatsApp group on in every PK6. Um, we do not have we do not have a mailing list yet because the secretariat it was just one. We we do have the mailing list. We have, we do have the PKSIG mailing list. Yes, but it's a it's a general list. Like it gets updated every year. Okay. It's not a yearly mailing list. Yeah. Anyone else? Shridib, and then uh, Santosh here. You, you go first, and then. Um, yeah, uh, I would like to say something uh, about the Nepal uh, thing uh, regarding gender. Because since I was also involved, I was one of the chairing the fellowship uh, fellowship and selection committee. So what we had done was uh, we selected all the women. So priorities were given to women first, and then uh, then the men. So so that was our priority, and we even brought a transgender. So so. You know, we were completely gender friendly. So that that was something that we did. 
100 percent of the applicants. Uh, it, this is related to the logistic because you said that all the SIGs, uh, PK SIGs were uh, at least of three or four days. So how are the arrangement? Were the participants provided with the residential accommodation or how and how was it managed? Okay, so there are two things. One that we when we do, uh, when we have done PK SIG previously, in 2016 we did it in a university um, and in 2017 we did it in the provincial IT board. Accommodation, yes, we arrange accommodation for all the fellows, and that same accommodation is available for non-fellows on payment. Um, in, in terms of other logistics, I mean, you can just hire a vendor and, you know, he can serve you with food and stuff. Um, I don't think that logistics is the main issue. Uh, just one little comment before I leave. About the this uh, gender issue, we have provided fellowship to every female that has ever participated in PK SIG, but it is not a question of we welcoming them, it is a question of them coming over to the school and managing to take three or four days out of their time traveling to probably another city. Even if it is the same city, even then it becomes an issue for the ladies to, you know, spend all day there. So this is a bit of a cultural thing as well. I'm, I mean, I don't I, know. I fully agree with that, but I think Amrita's point was that having women in the management uh, committees help to attract more women. Exactly. This is this is why we are going to have more women in the management of this PK Sig. Thank you very much, Vakas. We now move on to Afghanistan Sig by Kaskar. By the way, Khaksar was a 2016 PK Sig fellow. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we have uh, Afghan Afghanistan School on Internet Governance this year in April. Uh, so, next slide, please. Uh, actually, Afghanistan uh, SIG is uh, managed by NITPA, National Information Technology Professional Associations of Afghanistan. It's a registered body within the Ministry of Justice in Afghanistan, uh, a homegrown community for the volunteers who come together and collab collaborate for the IU, uh, IU issues. It's also ICANN's at large uh, structure under APRALO. Uh, uh, the first and the second uh, uh, IG was organized by them. Uh, without uh, these uh, two SEGs, uh, NETPA also organized a bunch of events, uh, uh, actually the, the uh, sessions and trainings, uh, uh, short time and long, long time uh, uh, as volunteerly as well. So this is the list, I'm skipping the list. Uh, maybe you, you can see at the uh, NETPA's website as well. We uh, have uh, three participants in NSEC 2016, uh, one participant at MIAC 2016, four participants at ICANN 57, two at EPNEC 42, and uh, five participants at PKSEC 2016, which I was as well, and two participants last year in PKSEC 2017. Uh, this uh, year we uh, had uh, AFSEC 2018 with 14 uh, lectures, uh, three panel discussions, and one role play session. Uh, actually, the Vino was a private university in uh, Afghanistan, which called Kardan University. Uh, we have to, a total of one, uh, one sex applications where we selected only 30 participants, uh, where six of them were female. Uh, it was a 30 days long event, uh, and the last day was uh, with the consortium of uh, ISOC uh, Afghanistan chapter. Uh, the sponsors were uh, for the VNU, we have the Kardan University, for the remote participant application software, it was APTLD. Uh, financial support was with two private national companies there. Uh, we have the uh, participant from uh, students, journalists, economists, govern uh, government, uh, private sector, civil society, and as well technical community. Uh, uh, we had 26 national and international speakers. Uh, 
uh, five remote speakers, including Bahir Ismat and uh, uh, Satish Babu. Uh, as well, Wolfgang sent a short video, uh, his wishes to the AFSEC 2018. The challenges uh, we faced, uh, uh, we have, uh, still we have, and we are trying to uh, uh, manage it. The first one is financial problems, which is already with all of the sex, national sex. Uh, we have a lack of internet faculty on site because uh, uh, coming, to the uh, coming to Afghanistan is another problem. We don't have uh, their on site, but they are not willing to come to uh, Afghanistan due to the situation. We have their technical problem. Uh, as well, the manner problem inside in the uh, event we had was technique, uh, the speakers and video recording. What we learned from this uh, sake this year, uh, uh, it was uh, we, we learned that it's not a one person job. Uh, we must have a dedicated team for it, uh, as well uh, to not plan in a short time. We must have a lot of time uh, to uh, uh, the, take all of the things done. Uh, uh, inside the events, we, uh, um, we had a little time for the discussions. So we learned that we must, uh, we must have a lot of discussion inside the, uh, we will have the time for QAA. Uh, as well for the uh, consortium events or joint events, we should have a specific MOU between two parties. We had uh, a joint event with ISOC, but actually we, uh, we were not happy with them. So actually uh, we learned that we might have at the first uh, a specific MOU and then we will go for the event. Achievements, uh, the, we uh, trained 30 more students in the IG, uh, where the total numbers goes to uh, grow to 68. Uh, and as well, we have found new partnership uh, and we extended the program from two days to three days. Uh, here are the links and references that you can find more about uh, uh, AFSEC. And thank you. Thank you very much. Uh for that very interesting presentation. Uh, it's very good to see that uh, you have progressed so far in Afghanistan. Are there any questions? Uh, as usual, there is a question from Amrita, which is about the same question asked earlier, plus whether you had any session in the curriculum on gender. Uh, actually, uh, no. We uh, it was planned that Nuria Ahmadi to. Uh, we actually we have in the uh, executive management member the females. Uh, one of them is Nuria Ahmadi. Uh, he was planned to uh, talk a session on the gender, but actually she did. It, she was not there at that time. We planned. We had in the curriculum, but uh, but she didn't that time. Uh, actually, the problem. So we have the females in the committee uh, what was what was the format that you used was it like just lecture base or discussion uh, did you use interactive sessions uh, actually we we had the interactive sessions like uh, the panel discussions here uh, we had the, uh, one of them was uh, Amrita there uh, and uh, as well we have the lectures the, a lot of them were the lectures. We have only three panel discussions. But other were the lectures and then we had the Q&A. But the things we noted there that Q&A was not enough for the participant. And they... Uh, yeah, thanks very much uh, for the presentation. Thank you. Thanks. A big hand for... Uh, <laughs> uh, we will now move on to the Philippines, uh, SIG. And uh, before that... Uh, uh, I've been told that there will not be a tea break in this session or a coffee break. Instead, the K will organize coffee here in the room. So the coffee will come, come to you. We now move on to uh, Philippines. It is <laughs> no, no break. We have to grab the coffee and come back and sit on your seat. <laughs> Over to Jessamine uh, for the Philippines presentation. Hello. Hi. Hi, okay. So is working. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jessamine from the Philippines. I'm from the Foundation for Media Alternatives, and I'm going to report now on the 2017 Philippine Internet Governance Colloquium. So, as you can see here, we do not, um, we did not call it the SIG. So, 
I guess that's um, one of the disclaimers I have to say before I go on to the presentation because I, as I was explaining also to Professor Chen earlier that as far as names are concerned, as far as labels are concerned, there has not been um, any Philippine SIG. And actually, if we're also going by the names, there also hasn't been any Philippine IGF. So, but also Professor Chon was explaining to me earlier that actually SIGs are what you want it to be. So it doesn't depend on the labels. So maybe we can just move on. So this um, event was actually organized by these three organizations. The Foundation for, for Media Alternatives, that's my organization. It's, a civil, it's from civil society. And the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or the ICT, and also the Internet Society Philippines chapter. Um, so I think one of the most important points that I have to raise is that the DICT, the Department of ICT, is actually very young in the Philippines. It was only established in 2016. So um, it's, all, it's only been there for two years that although there was an ICT office before, it was housed in a different agency. So from the time that a department was actually established two years ago, it had it has had to um, do a lot of growing. So that's also one of the considerations. Anyway, um, despite that, despite um, the very young nature of this department, there has actually been um, several other IG initiatives also in the Philippines also um, with the initiative of these three groups. So in, the, in 2015, we actually held a multi-stakeholder forum on internet governance, human rights, and development. And um, this um, consultative forum was actually in consultation or in preparation for the development or the drafting of the Philippine Declaration of Internet Rights and Principles, which was held in, uh, which was launched in 2015. So this declaration is a document that was um, drafted and developed collaborat collaboratively by those who attended this uh, multi-stakeholder forum. In 2015, there was a pre-internet governance forum that was held um, also by the Department of ICT because they were planning to um, send delegates to the IGF at that time, but it did not push through. And then in 2016, there was another forum related to internet governance. And then in 2017, that was the latest um, event, the Philippine Internet Governance Colloquium. So, so this event was um, held in two days, in October 18 to 19, in Quezon City. That's um, within that's a city, city within Metro Manila, and it was um, attended by um, 51 attendees from civil society, also in government and the tech community. And um, as far as the program is concerned, so the agenda was divided into five major topics which was um which were divided into smaller sub sessions so for the first day um it was this first two major topics the ict ecosystem under that is universal broadband access and local community networks the next topic is cybersecurity, data privacy and protection of online human rights and then for day two it's um these three topics key internet technologies um, the digital economy, including the startup ecosystem in the Philippines, free trade, e-governance, and then the last one is digital inclusion, under which there's um, there was a separate session on gender. So there's gender mainstreaming and women in ICT. So the format of this is basically um, there are two, two to three speakers um, or presenters for each session, and then there was a question and answer or this discussion um, session after your presentations. Um, got that. Some pictures from the forum. And key learnings and ways for, forward. 
Um, of course, the multi-stakeholder mo model is critical, and um, these three organizations that um, have been working together so far are still open to listening to more suggestions and holding more discussions on IG in the future. And as I said, um, there are still um, plans to hold um, formal Philippine SIG in the future and maybe a Philippine IGF, hopefully. And what else? Uh, in future events, topics and themes for discussion will be set by the organize won't be set by the organizers, but will be decided, hopefully, by the participants themselves based on which topics matter to them. And then maybe just to flag, actually, right now, Jul since yesterday, July 11 to 13, the DICT is also holding another. Um, Internet governance training in the Philippines. Uh, this is in partnership with ISOC Asia Pacific and the APT. And then sometime within 2018 to 2019, we're also planning to um, organize an internet governance roadshow because one of the challenges that um, we observed during the other previous IG events is that it's they're mostly Manila centric. So actually, all of the events that I that um, I mentioned earlier were held in Metro Manila. So, but the Philippines is an archipelago, and there are a lot of um, uh, key cities also in Visayas and the Mindanao region. So we're trying to um, bring these um, kinds of discussions also to other regions in the country. And so that's it. Thank you, Jasmine. What's the, uh, this, first one, uh, this one is um, happening right now. It's um, a gover an IG training held by the Department of ICT by the government in partnership with um, ISOC, um, Asia Pacific, and APT. So I have not heard a lot of feedback about it, but from what I've seen, um, um, it's a mixture of civil society. And how many? For, I'm not sure how many attended, but I've only seen pictures. But I think there are a lot of actually students, IT students that um, attended this training. But I'm not sure about the number. Thank you. Yeah, like a national thing. Yeah. yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you. First is, uh, you have mentioned a multi-stakeholder group somewhere around two, 2015. Uh, I would like to know whether your government was part of that uh, process. Oh. Uh, the second question is, uh, given the fact that you're an archipelago spread over mm. many islands, how does it impact your uh, uh, internet governance uh, colloquium and other programs? How do you get people to participate from all these places? Yeah, that's um, actually one of the issues that we're trying to address. Um, admittedly, the previous events have mostly been, as I said, Manila-centric. So most participants are really from Metro Manila, although a couple have um, come. They flew in from the other regions. But now with the IG Roadshow that I mentioned, we are trying to bring the events to them so that they wouldn't have to fly into Manila. And then the with for the multi stakeholder forum, yes, actually the government was was part of that. I think that's very interesting. It is unusual to have that in Asia Pacific. It is there in Latin America, Brazil and all that, but in, in these parts of the world it has been difficult to get the government into a process dominated by civil society. So it's good. Uh, anything any remarks on gender? Um for the gender um for Amrita's uh, questions, actually the for the speakers there were 41 total speakers and 19 of them were female so it's pretty much so we of course appreciate the fact that you are of course a woman uh, in the, the gender discourse <laughs> yeah so any other questions so thank you very much uh, Jessamine. thank you so now we we move on to the uh, pan-african sig aisha shebi are you online She's not online yet, so uh, we will move on to uh, NASIG, the North American SIG. It is not a presentation, it is just a, a, a few uh, observations on the SIG because I was there participating in it and also helping to organize it because basically it was my friends from uh, one common friend, Glenn McKnight, who was there in both the uh, India SIG 
uh, and he was also the organizer of uh, one of the organizers of NASIG, the first NASIG, and he is the lead organizer of the second NASIG happening in 2019, uh, which is in, going to be in Montreal. So the first North American School of Internet Governance was organized together with the ICANN meeting in Puerto Rico in March this year, just before the ICANN meeting. Uh, and it is supported by .pr domain. Uh, as you may be aware that Puerto Rico is the region of US, but they are slightly more than a state. They have their own domain name, uh, I mean, uh, in, in CCTLD. They also have an anthem, a flag. They have their own uh, national football team. So they are somewhat different from the rest of US. So .pr is their uh, CCTLD, and they supported the event uh, with a lot of funds. Uh, Polytechnic University, which is the, the venue, ISOC PR, ISOC Puerto Rico, Internet Society, ICANN, the Public Interest Registry, AFLIAS, and a uh, couple of other agencies. These were the people who were supporting them. Uh, since it was just uh, before the ICANN meeting, there were uh, several ICANN dignitaries. The ICANN CEO, Yoren Marby, was there. The ISOC CEO, Kathy Brown, was there. Uh, ICANN board members, ISOC trustees, MAG members. So they all came into classes. So it is a fairly uh, marquee uh, speaker list. Uh, the topics uh, were uh, very similar to what we have discussed uh, uh, in various national SIGs. It is not very different. Uh, but there was a tendency to have uh, more of lectures, uh, which was actually seen as a problem later. In hindsight, people felt that uh, you know not too many lectures. You should have more interactive sessions. Uh, some of the interesting uh, topics included the role of the U.S. government in global internet governance. Of course, only they can do that because they are from the U.S. Some differences um, with our national six. Every session had a rapporteur who would uh, take down a report. Uh, and there was a newsletter that was published which compiled all these uh, reports together. Twitter, Facebook, yes. The students in, uh, also had a lot of age-wise senior people. Uh, not only youth. So this is probably a reflection of the society there. Uh, there, were a, there was a very spectacularly great session on gender. There was a separate session who, by a specialist, which uh, some of us, I was a rapporteur for that session, and I found it to be very interesting. So overall, the three-day uh, NASIG uh, session was a very good start for the North American SIG. But uh, they have uh, a long way to go on some of the aspects. Uh, now, since it was just before ICANN meeting, the participants included ICANN fellows from different parts of the world, not only from North America. Uh, the same thing will happen in the next uh, SIG in Montreal, NASIG in Montreal. So they are trying to create their own model, and also the organizing group was the ICANN North American Regional at Large Organization, NARALO. They were the organizers of this, not uh, multiple uh, I mean, ISOC chapters uh, or such groupings. So this is a very brief uh, uh, report on uh, NASIG. Uh, do we have uh, Professor Hong Zui on the line? Uh, so then we will move on to the China uh, SIG uh, with Professor uh, Hong Zui. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can Hello? hear you. Oh, oh, thank you. I provide the slides. And it would be very kind if you loaded the slides to the system. Uh, yeah, we're uh, loading the slides. Please give us a second. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, my uh, briefing will be very brief, uh, exactly in five minutes, uh, because my internet is not stable. It could be cut at any time. Tell me when I should go. Right, the slides are uh, on the screen now. Please go. Uh, okay, right. Uh, well, the uh, School of United Governance in China um, has been going on a very long process. Uh, before the, the, the school has been established, we organized uh, two um, uh, public training on, on internet governance. Um, it was held in 2013 and 2015, respectively, in Beijing. Um, it was supported by um, dot, dot CN, CNIC, and, and Indian Society of China. Um, uh, well, last year, we had organized the third uh, public training uh, in, in the same category. 
Uh, but because the government, uh, the central uh, administration of cyberspace, CAC, that's the top authority in China and on inner governance, um, advise us we should wait until a national policy and a program has been launched. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the program has been launched uh, quite recently, uh, even though the training has not go on, uh, the program has been uh, approved by the government, uh, even though um, a lot of details are still underdeveloped. Um, uh, the plan is that uh, the CAC will delegate around 10 universities across the country uh, to organize the curriculum education uh, for, um, for postgraduate students, uh, to let the students to learn the inner governance uh, from a global perspective regularly. So there will be a formal course, uh, well, building in the university curriculum uh, uh, in, in 10 universities. Uh, there will be a, a multidisciplinary uh, training. Uh, so far, uh, a law school, business school, uh, computer science, engineering, uh, public service schools are all being engaged uh, in this um, national, uh, international internet governance educational basis um, uh, established. So it seems that this program is quite um, uh, phenomenal. Uh, well, the, the central administration of cyberspace make it very clear they will make the official delegation in autumn uh, this year. And in the meantime, uh, the first pilot projects will be organized uh, in one of the university, most probably it will be in my university. And so we are building the curriculum and has already submitted the plan uh, to the government. Uh, so the first things I want to uh, emphasize is it's extremely important to get support uh, from the competent governmental authority. Um, uh, the curriculum uh, will be addressed uh, later. Uh, the government's model, uh, well, there's not very much multi-stakeholder. Uh, it seems that it will be led by the government and supported by the other stakeholder groups. The government has already engaged on uh, some uh, giant internet companies in China, like Tencent or Alibaba. Um, they've all show their support. Uh, so uh, even though there will be a uh, a training uh, or curriculum education uh, offered by university because the university is actually an open educational institution. And um, so the public can actually um, participate in this program and receive the information uh, whenever they need it. And it's because it's going to be a course, uh, it will be taught in 18 weeks, two hours a week. So that would be totally um, 36 hours uh, for the whole course. Whether it's going to be developed into a degree program, um, that's still, um, and that, 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 that's not being decided, but I see that government will be quite interested in pushing it into a degree program. In that case, it will be a more, um, uh, uh, that would be more sophisticated and comprehensive. Um, so far is, is a course model um, because it's, is, is offered in university. So I guess the funding organization or the, the logistic support are not issue at all. And for the quality control, um, uh, the teaching materials uh, will be approved by uh, CAC and uh, will be revealed by an uh, expert committee uh, to be established. And we also um, uh, interested in organize all the alumni uh, for, 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 for their uh, exchange of information. And we want to learn uh, what have we want to learn from the previous uh, the, uh, training. Uh, well, uh, let's move on to the second page: uh, curriculum uh, formulation. Uh, this is the, the table of contents we submitted to the government. At the beginning, there will be uh, some introduction to overarching uh, issues. Uh, this is primarily uh, to um, uh, to teach the the idea of four principles and uh, five key issues uh, outlined by Chinese President Xi Jinping at World Internet Conference um, is primarily emphasized We internet governance is the shared future for mankind. Uh, so this is the radical part. Uh, the last three part is quite similar to what is being uh, talked uh, by the other colleagues from the other uh, countries. Uh, there will be a technological um, uh, module 
uh, taught primarily by the technology expert about what is internet and technological infrastructure. And on the policy model, um, they will be um, emphasizing a couple of uh, key uh, legal issues uh, like privacy protection, data protection, cybersecurity, cybercrime, um, also involve some new uh, cutting edge legal issues such as blockchain and uh, artificial intelligence is, I'm quite interested in what is happening now in, uh, in Bangkok. Uh, the last module is an uh, economic module as being taught by other colleagues, the digital economy that's very much the centerpiece in this module. And also uh, we want to address a few um, issues on the free trade, uh, paperless trade facilitation for cross-border e-commerce. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor True. Uh, we might have a few questions for you. Uh, to start off, I would like to know uh, a bit on the gender aspect of the program. Did you have anything on gender specifically, or did you have a good mix of uh, participants and speakers uh, with uh, representation from women? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Uh, with respect to last two uh, training program we've already organized in uh, 2013 and 2015, uh, uh, we have around um, 70 uh, female students and 30 male students. <laughs> in the future, I guess, in this uh, uh, curriculum education, uh, I will have more uh, female students than male students. That's pretty clear. In Chinese university, you can see more uh, girls than boys. Uh, so I, I guess we have more female uh, experts uh, in governance. That's a good thing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, are there any other questions for uh, the China presentation? Yes, please, uh, please hold on. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, since I heard that you have an instable internet connection, so your connection may drop. That's why I decided to ask you this question now. Uh, can you can you tell us that uh, do you have any sessions or discussions on accessibility for persons with disabilities, or uh, did you had any participants in any of the SIGs uh, uh, or internet governance sessions that you organized there in China? Uh, really, those who had uh, uh, an impairment or uh, those who were with the disability? Oh, oh yes. Oh, thank you so much uh, for the question. Uh, yes, we do have a, a, a small session. It was placed in the, in the module of law and policy. Uh, this called inclusive uh, internet governance. Uh, that, that is to um, how to enable the equal access for people with a disability, uh, such as uh, visually impaired people to access the internet and that 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 is a, a important public policy issue uh, that's already uh, has a legal requirement in, in, in china yes, that's pretty clear oh, thank you uh thank you professor uh, are there any other questions yeah so we don't have any other questions so thank you very much again once again on behalf of all of us this is satish and uh, we would like to wish you the best for the next edition in autumn 2018 thank you, thank you. bye bye thank right so now we move on uh, uh, do we have the africa person online fad Okay, so uh, the MIAC, uh, that's the Middle East and adjoining country, SIG. Fahad has uh, asked us for uh, time at 4.30, local time, because she's, uh, he's engaged in another meeting. So uh, we currently, presently we have actually run through the uh, full uh, SIG list. So we have some time for discussions, uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, uh, before we get into the next agenda item. So are there any uh, issues of general relevance uh, to most or all SIGs that we would like to discuss at this time? Uh, the issue I had raised this morning about the content because uh, well, we saw the presentation from all the countries and <clears throat> uh, somehow we also discussed about the content and uh, as I I said this morning, there might be some local context, local situation where the discussion requires the uh, local issues to be considered. But at the same time, 
on <coughs> internet governance uh, uh, baskets, there are some issues which we can, if we can work on that uh, to make it kind of uh, common for all the local SIGs, uh, national level SIGs, yeah, that could be one way to streamline or standardize it. Date. North East Asia. North East Asia. Okay. Okay. Uh, first, China. <clears throat> to be precise, if you see the, the, the record, uh, like because Pakistan said like Pakistan is the first the, the Sikh uh, in Asia. And uh, if you see the record, uh, Beijing, they had an APILP in, uh, I guess, tw you can check in some in the website, 2011. It's sort of a hybrid of uh, addressing both for the domestic and uh, international. Uh, keyword is APILP. So the, but, uh, the reason why Pakistan and others sort of uh, 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 didn't see this one is uh, they stopped. No, first of all, they changed to the uh, APILP organized by the APRIGF. Then it disappeared. But still it's alive, in a sense alive in uh, uh, Beijing. So the occasionally like uh, Professor uh, Hon use a uh, both CNSIG hyphen APILP because everybody is still sort of uh, uh, alive. <clears throat> That's a China, okay? And uh, they have every in intention to have a uh, CNC and uh, take some time, but uh, there are no IGF. Second, in uh, Taiwan, uh, just IGF. They're not try to include the uh, SIG function as a tutorial within IGF. And they're very happy with those uh, Taiwan IGF. So the, it's unlikely that they'll make it as a full-blown uh, uh, SIG. Uh, Hong Kong, they're happy just having uh, ISOC. ISOC is doing uh, all those uh, IGF functions. And I guess in a city state, that may make sense. Because they can meet in every month, for example. Uh, because it's a one, one city. And, uh, and it seems to be they don't have any incentive to have a separate organization. Rather, uh, one organization do the all, everything. And it's very active. And the content is also very good. OK, come to the uh, uh, Japan. Uh, I saw in our region, Northeast Asia, the ISOC doesn't ex exist in the practical purpose. And uh, in Japan, they have a, a national IGF. Then, uh, then uh, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, rather unique. It's, they do the once a year, about an hour and a half. And uh, Korea, uh, we have a KRIGF, which just met for this year one day. Used to be a two days. And uh, they try to have a, uh, they have a tutorial as one of the four uh, track. So it's in a sense that's similar to the uh, uh, Sri Lanka. But it's, it's really a tutorial, not the, really a SIG. So they just pick up those uh, hot topic, like a blockchain, for example, this time, as a one of those uh, uh, four items, one, one and a half hour each. So the, all together, SIG is not a really uh, uh, issue, uh, except China. Then also, if you look at Japan and Korea, we are sort of moving to the, how shall I say, next generation. Like if you're talking about the AI, blockchain, there's just so many 
so many meetings, almost monthly. And uh, so the I, traditional IGF, especially like a domain name, just people just don't discuss anymore. Uh, that's the uh, status now. And if whoever taking my news, uh, yes, please do include. And uh, because uh, uh, I don't think we are, we are going to make any of those formal report or anything. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chan. Um, there are several uh, things that we have to reflect on. Uh, one is to do with the whole uh, curriculum uh, issue that is already raised, uh, plus the fact that uh, some of the new things that we have learned from APSIC this time, especially AI, which seems to be an overriding thing that we need to focus on. FinTech and blockchain, crypto, seems to be another area. Uh, Another area that we have not discussed much here is uh, GDPR and uh, whole uh, pr data protection, which is very hot uh, in Europe and uh, within ICANN and so on. Uh, there's a lot of work going on. So as we reflect upon what should be this, the kind of curriculum for, for our next national SIGs, these are some of the inputs that we have to uh, take into account. Uh, we can have a discussion. Anybody who wants to kind of uh, talk about this or any other topic are welcome. Because you have to. Yes, yeah. uh, one more, one thing actually. So um, we, uh, since I've been here, we have been talking about um, the other chapters that are here uh, about a South Asian or a SARC, something of a sub-regional or a regional SIG. Uh, I understand that there will be many hurdles to that, uh, finances being the first one. But there are two things that probably we can do, as uh, in order for a, for a regional or sub-regional thing. Well, one is that um, the the ISOC course, the ISOC online course on IG. You know that there are eleven modules to that. Uh, as a pilot project, we as a chapter are offering these uh, modules to our chapter members, uh, moderated by Zakir. You know Zakir Sayed. So we were, we thought probably we will not get a good response from the from the members, right? It's an online course; people may not be interested. But to our utter happiness, actually, we got over 100 applications for that, and we had to select only 35. So we turned it down to 35 now. What we think as a chapter is that probably down the line, if this pilot project is successful, we get a good retention ratio. The next in the next version, we could probably invite other chapters to also participate in the same thing. Uh, you can select your own members, we can select our, we can, we can decide on what number of seats each chapter gets. And we can start doing a, an online sub-regional course on IG, moderated by anybody, like you can from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, any good ICT expert. The second thing is that we tried a digital, um, we tried a digital meeting, a digital seminar on uh, women empowerment in South Asia. Uh, Delhi chapter did one. Uh, then Stamba chapter did another one and we, I discussed it at ICANN meeting in October and every chapter was very welcoming to it. So if we cannot do something in um, physically or in person, at least we can do something digitally. At least, I mean, we are all here because of internet, right? So let's just use internet and probably we can do sessions um, or we can start with the sessions and then develop it into a one day or a half day program um, and start doing something online. So. These are some of the suggestions that we as SIB representatives could do. Uh, thank you, Vakas. Uh, I think these are, uh, Aisha is there? Okay. Uh, Amrita wants, okay. Uh, Mahi and then Amrita. Okay, just to add uh, Vakas uh, statement. Actually, at the moment, we are in planning to conduct a summit kind of thing on uh, internet uh, by November or December as Sri Lanka chapter. We are uh, actually dis discuss within the Internet Society uh, chapter delegates uh, to be uh, present at this uh, summit to as an initiative to, uh, to be started. So it can be continued for years. So where that we can again, we have another collaboration kind of thing. If you find a good funding model for this, we can all you know follow. We'll uh, discuss more uh, of this online. Yes, Amrita. Amrita, can you hear us? Please go ahead. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me, Satish? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. 
Okay. Um, yes, two points which I wanted to make based upon the comments which Professor John also had shared, that based upon the level of technology development and the development of a country or an economy is the level of understanding or interest of uh, the community. For example, in developed communities like Japan or Korea, the interest is much advanced in different uh, topics, uh, you know, which is upcoming or more technology oriented. However, if you look at communities in South Asia or even other uh, developing communities, it is more of understanding the internet governance basics, the privacy, uh, tackling, um, fake news, etc., which is of importance. So um, it is important for the national SIGs to understand what the critical issues for their economy is or how they want their economies to grow or the SIGs to uh, kind of make an effort in building awareness. So um, I think the course balance also depends upon um, national SIG to national SIG. Um, However, blending courses at a regional level, obviously, uh, the, the mix of what would be the contents, etc., is something which is a different uh, thing. Another point which I wanted to make is, um, you know, when SIGs are discussing uh, the curriculum and how they want to conduct, it is very important to understand what the objectives are. Is it just to provide online training? Or is it to build capacity, interact with the individuals, and then have some people who are trained go down to the society and at least create a basic level of awareness who in turn can act as um, ambassadors for the course and get more people, or these people may be engaged? Possibly these are questions which needs to be uh, dwelt upon. That's about what I want to say now. Thank you very much, Amrita. Um, yeah, so we will uh, uh, keep these uh, discussions live. Uh, I am inviting comments from others uh, on uh, these topics. Um, while comments are coming up, uh, I would also like to state that uh, the online courses are an important tool that we have. Uh, in INSIG, what we have done is we have made it uh, a mandatory prerequisite for the, the shortlisted fellows to undergo the uh, I can learn and ISOC uh, courses. So as, as a prerequisite, we have done that. Uh, not fully successful because not all of them take the time to do this. So, and we don't do an exam or anything. So we trust there, it's an honor system. So yeah, any other comments? Anu. Thank you, Shatish. Uh, my question is, uh, this is very important thing, the AI governance, of all, all governance, internet governance. This, uh, this particular subject is very important, a stakeholder is the government. But government participation is uh, almost zero every year. What about that thing? If we are implementing it any kind, uh, anywhere else, uh, government is very most uh, significant stakeholder. So what is our uh, thoughts, what is, our, what is our thinking about government participation? I think that's a very valid concern uh, because ultimately governments have to decide policy on some of these aspects. Uh, however, they don't seem to have any consultative process. Maybe they have some access to some experts who may feed the information to them, but without public visibility, without uh, the ability for us to kind of also kind of provide our inputs in this whole thing. The ideal situation, as I think, would be if uh, the national SIGs could organize a, a one-day event, you know, uh, on some of these things, so that we attract attention and we are claiming the mind, mind space, saying that we can contribute in this. Uh, that could be a starting point, and if we could get some government people into that meeting, into that event, and we can have access to some experts, uh, that would be a good way to start. But in countries like India, uh, I'm not sure how seriously they will take us. APAC is doing, uh, so, so, so I saw APAC is currently doing a three-day workshop for the capacity building of government officers in ICT, uh, in, in, in IG, uh, in Manila. So Navid is there right now in Philippines. 
in Philippines. So this is one good example where the government and the civil society, civil society sort of teaching the government on how to do internet governance. I think this is kind of a landmark achievement for ISOC. Uh, yes, government uh, aspect is very important, but uh, the incident that Vakas refers to uh, the government course which ISAP APEC is doing in Philippines. Uh, I believe that was the initiative that came from the Philippines government that we want to do this thing. So uh, somehow there has to be uh, the interest from the government side, uh, which I'm not sure at this point of time that uh, how many governments are interested in our region uh, and from where we come from to do this, to do this thing. So the interest uh, has to be shown from the from the government side and then the civil society and the expert and IG government leaders can take over or can help them in, in organizing such a things. Uh, I think an important uh, point here is that uh, we have organizations like ISOC that many of us are involved with, IEEE, also some, uh, some of us are involved with, who have actually brought out resources on these aspects. In fact, ISOC does have an AI policy paper. Now, uh, we can uh, think of use, utilizing some of these things even if the government has not asked us. We can have an event that we run. But by doing so, I think it's a good starting point that we can tell the government, look, we are also capable of kind of contributing uh, in this uh, dialogue. Yes, please. Uh, in our context in Nepal, uh, when we start the idea of uh, internet governance, most people uh, think about the government, not government, not, uh, not internet governance, only uh, look like the regular government is used. But uh, then they understand uh, it is easy to participate in our activities. Uh, but uh, in my observation, I think uh, in this time, when starting the IGF, when starting the internet governance issue, there is the important thing is only internet. Internet, uh, internet regulation, internet name and number, internet policy, uh, these issues. But nowadays, uh, internet is not standalone. Uh, under this internet, uh, have uh, other different issues, AI governance, IoT governance, and cyberspace governance are different type of issues raised here. Is this sufficient to discuss only one day or two days uh, about this with big issues uh, in this uh, any country or any uh, communities, any group? Uh, it creates the awareness. The similar type of activities like other sectors, uh, health and other sectors, they raise, uh, they raise the different type of issue, uh, organize a different type of program with the collaboration with different organization. And even they also integrate into this content, uh, the academic course, school level course and university course. Uh, so with, uh, let's think about this, this uh, uh, broad, broad sense of this idea, idea of activities and then um, different type of complex issue of the idea of, uh, into these other stakeholders and other sectors, not only the responsibility our uh, IGF from and then uh, SIG from and then uh, global or regional from, then uh, rethinks about this uh, from uh, moving into these other sectors also, I think so. Thanks for that. Uh, I think when we all started our national SIGs, we did not wait for a mandate in the government. We, we just said we will start. So we have a precedence of uh, going ahead and starting things and later on the government might take us seriously. So there is nothing stopping us from starting, taking these baby steps. Uh, even a one day meeting is a step. So it's probably worth doing so that, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, then, you know, take it to the next level. Uh, anybody else wants to, yes. Yeah, uh, when it comes to uh, issues like internet shutdowns which happened in Sri Lanka, uh, we were able to rise as an organization, rise as a community, uh, because we had done few things on IG. Yeah, yeah, if otherwise, we would do something other ways. So uh, the path we have taken was uh, correct at the moment. So that's why uh, the government uh, he heard our voice. We created the uh, pressure. We created the real uh, procedure to address these issues at the moment. So it's uh, actually a win of inter internet governance uh, in our country. Uh, are there any other uh, comments? Anybody else would like to make comments on, especially the areas of the new emerging uh, governance areas, AI and uh, you know, blockchain, fintech, uh, social media uh, governance and so on. Uh, where, uh, strictly speaking, they are outside the internet governance domain, strictly speaking. 
but it is very much aligned to what we are doing so far and what we have seen here at APSIG. So this seems to be the way of the future that we have to take on some of these things as well. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the times uh, politicians, uh, they talk about issues of smart cities, you know, all these issues without knowing the real study about what IoT is or what artificial intelligence is. So I think that can be a bridging gap where, you know, we can approach with all these issues because these are the top hit agendas where they want to cash in. And that's a, a burning point where we can hit. Right. So uh, now uh, we have the next agenda item uh, and we have also have uh, Fahad's presentation at 4.30. So what we could do is to perhaps move on to the, uh, the next one agenda item, which is the uh, internal matters of uh, the all -seek group uh, and try to finish it. And then uh, at 4.30, uh, finish Fahad's presentation and then move on to the last remaining cross-cutting issues. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, so in that case, the next item is the uh, all SIG organizational matters. There are two sub items in this. The first is the the next all SIG meeting. Uh, so, as it stands, we had taken uh, a kind of decision that we will have two all SIG meetings: one during the IGF, other during the APSIG. So, uh, this year's uh, APSIG meeting is now uh, over, and the next meeting is IGF. Now, can we know how many people plan to attend IGF from this group? One, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> right. There are f at least five people, probably a little more, who are reluctant to put their hands out. Uh, so at least five, maybe maybe six or seven people who are trying to attend the IGF. Uh, there are people who have given um, submitted workshop proposals. I think next week we will know the uh, the results. Uh, so, uh, I think Professor Chon is also planning to attend IGF this time uh, at Paris. Yeah, decided. Uh, yes, and uh, K.S. Park is also there. Uh, so, he's, he's there as well. So, we will definitely have the next Olympic meeting in Paris, uh, depending on the number of people. I don't know. I don't know how we are going to carry out the There is no day zero. That's a problem uh, because day zero is discontinued yeah. this time. Yeah, uh, but we have to find an evening time. Yeah, sort of uh, not a really meeting, just get dinner. It's more of a get together. Uh, is there See, what we will not have is uh, remote participation will not be there. Uh, uh, depends. We'll, we'll yeah. see. Uh, okay, I, I'm thinking probably we'll have a <coughs> for deferral. Oh, uh, we are going to stay at the same hotel. It's very like the uh, Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn. Uh, so the it'll be uh, it'll be easy to get together. Okay, whoever those fellows and the others could join. Then beyond, shall we have a sort of an informal get together? Yep. Uh, probably not not this kind of table. Uh. And, uh, uh, and or uh, dinner together. Dinner, yeah, certainly. So, so, so let's think about um, probably at least one. But people are busy, so they having a two get together may be difficult. Uh, usually, it doesn't work too well. So the we'll see. We still have a, a plenty of time, and uh, we want to know who are going. Then uh, 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 what will you want to accomplish over there? Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, probably we can finalize like August, September, but definitely it will be a holiday inn. And uh, we, which holiday inn? Because, because there's about 10 of them. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to let us know, know yet, which okay. one. And uh, then uh, sort of we get together there. Now, uh, if, I, if my uh, workshop proposal gets accepted, then I may travel on my own money. So I may also be there uh, in Paris, but it depends on how it goes. So no, if I, don't, <laughs> I have to find money. <laughs> money is a big problem. It's very expensive. So 
so tentatively we will have a get together at least in paris uh, so what will happen to the second formal meeting of the all sig group we don't have it or have it uh, online sometime of this all sig meeting yeah second all sig meeting of the year uh, i don't know uh, i just let's do this some easy way uh, in a jurev let's have some informal meeting <laughs> 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 yeah, it's too much of effort. But of course, we'll be ready to have a remote participation. Uh, we'll see. And uh, or any, any, anybody have any idea what to do? Uh, one of these suggestions that came up from the floor in the early discussion is that there should be monthly meetings uh, either under the all sig umbrella or in some other format but uh, there should be monthly meetings and let us then take one topic and discuss yeah that one is, uh, since we have a uh, uh, monthly remote meeting it's just a matter of how how to embed right. and uh, probably care can uh, take care of the handling but uh, the one in uh, 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 Junaib, uh, first of all, let me find out uh, what we can do at the Holiday Inn, okay? okay. Then uh, uh, probably we can talk more. Uh, who else are going? Uh, no, I can't say that. Because we haven't announced yet who are the Yeah. <laughs> so we will have a better picture next week when the workshop results come out. Okay, fellows, with uh, uh, let's sort of uh, give this way. Uh, as we announced, we'll decide by end of July, and uh, we are sort of waiting uh, IGF's uh, result, which is supposed to be finalized tomorrow. So that we will get that information either tomorrow or Saturday uh, over the weekend. Then we probably we spend about one week to finalize. Yeah, so uh, coupled with this, uh, I mean, meaning the activities of the all group is the, uh, the selection or election of uh, two office bearers, I mean, office bearers. So let us uh, have a discussion on the kind of office bearers that we want. Currently, what is there is the all sick chair. Uh, and uh, what we had in mind was we should have two vice chairs uh, to have the chair. Now, the chair's term is, term is one year. Uh, now, I've been asked if I can continue for another year uh, because the, the stability of the all sick group uh, needs to be established. So uh, I have said tentatively yes, but it is subject to ratification by this group. Uh, and Further, the next discussion would be uh, whether we can have two, uh, is two the right number uh, of vice chairs. Uh, now, once we have a structure in place, the structure should be sufficiently rigorous that we can have acti activities, which could be uh, monthly meetings or once in two months meetings or whatever uh, we can manage. So we would welcome opinions on this. Do we have a to-do list? Like, what is it exactly that the vice chairs or the what? What do we have to do so that, in, according to that, we can probably think of, you know, pitching in with our contributions? Or is there any task list or a matrix or anything agenda? Now the agenda is what we make it to be. <laughs> so it is uh, for us to kind of yes. Okay. Well, no, I just forgot. Uh, uh, let's tend, since we don't meet face to face. Let's tend to do this way. Sunday evening, don't make any reservation. Okay, uh, any appoint, other appointment, because if we ever get together, uh, it will be a Sunday afternoon or evening because we don't know how what time you you guys are arriving, or uh, the last day, Wednesday evening. Uh, in between, uh, people are just too busy. Just no, no way to get together. So the try not to block, uh, uh, make appointment uh, on a Sunday evening and uh, uh, Wednesday evening. So you, you're referring to the IGF? No, oh, IGF. Okay. Now what uh, Wakas is raising is about 
the routine regular monthly activities yeah so uh, k would you like to tell us what we have planned out so far for uh, as as far as monthly you provide monthly updates no it's not a monthly, uh, monthly uh, meeting yeah so you know she handling it both yeah so uh, just tell us about the uh, it is in a website yeah it is there no, i participated also but let us hear from her so Monthly meetings uh, is usually every first Thursday of the month, and uh, mostly we talk about current topics and issues uh, that needs to be addressed. And uh, we also send reminders before the meeting. Now, maybe I should ask this from the group. Reminders should be sent uh, supposedly a week or two weeks before the meeting, but before then, uh, I. I, even though I send the reminders two weeks or one week before the meeting, I still find a few people um, attending the meeting. That's why I changed the, the timing a little bit, so which is more amenable to the group so that I can have more participants. Yeah, so I think it's an interesting question because uh, I'm also guilty of not attending all the APSIC meetings. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, many of us here are, uh, they drop in some time into the meeting, but not always. Uh, I got no idea. I'm helping the Kaya because she did such a good job this time. At every remote meeting, you, the remote meeting, those date is fixed. You can find it in the home page, okay? Yeah. Okay, how about co-chair? Okay, the, who is going to be co-chair? The rotate among the national SIG. Yes, Professor. Okay. That would be no, no, very no, no. much helpful. <laughs> much, <laughs> much especially if the co-chair will address a special topic as what we have discussed earlier this morning. Much especially if uh, he or she will address the topic uh, for that meeting. So let's write out this co-chair idea. So uh, if you make a schedule of the, there are I think seven of us here, uh, National yeah, SIGs. Yeah, no, but uh, the co-chair also. Put the co-chair along with it. Uh, you can contact. Yeah. I take that means uh, no one will say no to me whenever I contact them. So that you tell them in advance, <laughs> give them sufficient notice so that uh, they will not say no. Yes, yes, for sure. So, so you, you decide now, in the <laughs> next one, August. Here. Any volunteers for August, co-chairing the August meeting? Nepal, Nepal. Nepal, so Nepal, Nepal SIG. Nepal. Uh, Shridip, so Nepal. So the Nepal, uh, so the thing is, since it's an all SIG rotation, the SIG person has to tell us. So who's the Nepal SIG uh, official person? So yeah, so will you let us know who among you will chair? Uh, so you agreed to take on, isn't it? Okay, so one of them will, so from Nepal will chair. So tentatively. Yeah, tentatively. Okay. No, no, to, to, okay. to chair the meeting. Online meeting. On, on chair the online meeting. K okay, will be organizing the meeting. Yeah, I will reach out to all. Yeah. So for September, anybody? Oh, no. sorry, my bad. Um, August we don't have a meeting. We will skip August instead. Okay. We will so start this is September. September. So we'll start in September and Nepal. Okay. So do you want to fix August and September also? I mean, sorry. So you don't have in uh, August? September. September 6th. September 6th. September 6th. September 6th is the next meeting. Yes. And Nepal will be chairing that meeting, or co-chairing that meeting. Co-chair. Okay. Yeah, the rest of it you can allocate. Yeah. K can mm -hmm. allocate and let us know so that there's no confusion. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay, back to this question of uh, why stays of the uh, all SIG group. What is the general opinion? It's uh, the role should be described, I believe, rather than right. So, uh, like I said, uh, the activity level is up to us to fine tune. So, currently, for the last one year, we've been only active during the uh, the two SIG meetings. Uh, just before, just prior to that, we wake up and you know we organize these meetings. Uh, but uh, as we go forward, maybe we can uh, 
make ourselves much more active. Now we have a number of new items to be covered as we go forward. Uh, maybe enhance uh, our sharing and the learning that we are suggesting. So there are a number of things we can uh, take up if you're interested. So uh, the co-chairs will be then leading some of these things on their own. Some of these aspects that we can identify. Currently there should be, so can we count, we have Nepal uh, going from the west to east, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, Philippines. That is seven that we have right now. Are there any more? No. So we have seven right now. But there may be more coming up uh, as we go forward. China. So China is the eighth. Right. So here we have the Afghanistan, Bangladesh, China, India, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, Sri Lanka. That's eight. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think having two co-chairs is a great idea because, you know, vice chair, sorry, sorry, I'm like really sorry. Vice chair is a good idea because right now it's everything centralized in one person. So I think we need to develop the leadership as well. And, and the co-chairs can lead in the process of getting the uh, topics, hot topics so that the APC community has a broader perspective in terms of communication as well as sharing the ideas and uh, you know issues like GDPR and how we can grow and like talk about all these issues at a very subsequent regional level. So that's a great idea, I think. So the community will be an issue, no? who will be the, whether that person designated will continue in the next year or not as a vice chair. That that, that uh, continuity, <coughs> Tom, we can discuss about that first uh, about the need. I think uh, that is necessary looking at the kind of concentration on the current chair and the uh, professor and the others because there should be some load bearing mechanism. Uh, and uh, it should be considered for other parameters of uh, geographical presentation and other things. If that has to be considered, I think that has to be also, uh, it should be considered. Uh, apart from that, uh, when Professor was saying about the stability in the funding, long-term planning, five years, I was thinking, how to sustain this mechanism. We can also, uh, if we start talking about the mechanism now, I think we have to keep um, keep the larger picture in vision how we want to move forward in maybe coming five years or 10 years. So that will be helpful if we look at the larger picture. Thank you. If we select uh, each month a new co-chair, then uh, I don't think th there is a need of vice chairs. If we have vice chairs, then uh, why we need uh, regular co-chairs? Yeah, uh, the reason is that the co-chair, so-called co-chair is to co-chair with K the meeting. It starts and ends with the meeting. Uh, that person is not expected to do anything before or after the meeting. It's during the meeting that the person is active. <laughs> Yeah, online meeting. So here what we're talking about is a longer term engagement uh, for a period of one year, take up initiatives and execute them. So it's a more involved, you have to spend some time, uh, it's a voluntary kind of work. So that's the way we see the, this role. I have a suggestion on this, like, so the next All SIG meeting will be in Paris, IGF, right? Um, no, not likely because currently the situation is that there may not be a full meeting, it may be get together. Okay, so, so my suggestion was that first probably on the in, on a mailing list we could identify what are the things that the coaches define the roles and the responsibilities of every position that we are trying to achieve here. And then in the next whatever meeting that we have, we can have this elections or nominations that or whatever you end up in the next APC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that yeah, may yeah. be true as well. Yeah. Also, uh, while uh, Vakas referred to uh, the roles and duties and all that, uh, uh, another thing that we had to discuss also is the bylaws. Yes, so bylaws. we did have a very brief discussion last year. 
so uh, but it turns out that we don't we didn't want to make it a very heavyweight organization so we have so far avoided it but if we feel that there should be some not bylaws but at least some rules of procedure or some organizational norms or rules uh, we might want to do that but that again requires people to handle this whole thing uh, it won't happen by itself so uh, it's up to us to uh, i am open either way if you want to take it over the mailing list and spread it out and you know Uh, discuss this in detail and then come back that's fine but there there is a risk that that might only happen in the next face to face meeting yes please go ahead uh yes vakas idea uh, that he proposes it makes sense why uh, first because uh, uh, yes we do not want it to be a very heavyweight kind of a uh, law legalized based rule procedure based organization but uh, there has to be the rules of the game defined so that uh, there are no confusions so uh, and the other thing is that uh, we need to uh, perhaps we could make the mailing list uh, active rather proactive it is active we can make it proactive discuss the things uh, because uh, uh, it would be easier if we have the rules of the game defined and then in the next face to face meeting uh, if it's possible in paris or uh, if not uh, the next fpc meeting uh, we can define that uh, what are the coaches uh, for the time being uh, what my suggestion would be that uh, for instance if september uh, the in september if nepal is co-chairing the meeting so uh, if there are any other associated duties involved uh, in the month of september nepal could take over the responsibilities uh, related to all sig activities uh, similarly if any other month uh, whatever is the uh, is the sig taking the responsibility of the co chair uh, they could uh, take the other additional uh, responsibilities uh, so and before we go and decide that we need two or one or whatever vice chairs we also need to define their roles and responsibilities that what they would be responsible for thank you right so before i comment on that over to k for her intervention personal comment uh, i think uh, the group here should also i think the group here should also consider that the um, participation in the mailing list is the same with the uh the usual monthly meetings so you might want to take that into consideration and also i have your comment from shahul he said that uh, i also echo the voice represented there uh to have two vice chairs and also support the proposal for the existing chair to continue one more term for stability yes. and smooth yes. uh yes. transition yes. of the role Okay. Any comments? Second, I support the idea of existing of, of continuing with the existing chair for now. Yeah. At least for one more term. Until it gets proper. But uh, the vice chair problem that K mentioned, that the activity levels in the meeting as well as the mailing lists is rather low, uh, and by continuing or the status quo continuing would mean that that also continues. and uh, we would like to be little more active than what we are currently so how do we do that then no but there no vice chairs <laughs> no but see, the thing is uh, there is a difference there the uh, when you say uh, nepal will co-chair uh, that is fine one of the people can co-chair but the vice chair role is an individual it is not a country it is not a country so uh, therefore that has got to be uh, you know anyway so i don't want to kind of push this too hard uh, but uh, now we are approaching 4:30 so are there any last comments we can of course resume later after the father's presentation i had regarding the bylaws the need of uh, creating the bylaws so why don't we start now that uh, sharing a bylaw and editing online okay even so without so can we then have a maybe a small group to work on the bylaws without any designation uh, vice chair co chair yeah. and all that uh, i will be there volunteers there are two volunteers uh, k will you note, note this please ah so lois bravo i'll be there of course, of course so we have four volunteers right now 
Santosh. Okay, Santosh, uh, uh, Vakas, Shridip, and Mahi. Any other volunteers? Anybody wants? Uh, Sagarga? Okay, there are two more volunteers. Here. Please uh, add them to these. So, uh, it's for gender balance, I believe. You want to join the team? Otherwise, you want to join the team? So, Dr. Govind also will join the team. <laughs> so, to be very clear, the role of this group is to make a first draft of the bylaws, which will come back to this bigger group for comments and then finally some kind of an approval. No, there are no bylaws. We are starting from scratch. How many months? Three months? Three months is enough, uh, the expert says. Uh, so, three months. So, we are now. Uh, so no, August, by September, November. October. Uh, by November. First week of November. Yeah, we can discuss. So. <laughs> we can argue in the IGF. <laughs> so, if we are meeting in, in the IGF, then we can discuss this. Yes, we can pass this and discuss. So, Sagarika, what do you propose? Uh, what, when do you want the first draft? <laughs> okay, we, to, tonight's dinner we can decide. Why don't you present your first draft during the September call? That may be too short. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so we have a tentative plan for whatever it's worth. We can so, solve the issue of uh, the roles, new, new vice chair roles and their terms and all the things within the bylaw, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so please note that uh, APCIG is a uh, regional organization. There are some complications of the regional organization. Uh, we will, uh, I'm sure Professor Chon and uh, KS Park, who are handling the, some of these aspects, will tell us you know, what is really uh, sensitive. Uh, yeah, so with that, uh, uh, with K has an intervention. So in a month, I will be hu hunting the group for the first draft. Before the first meeting, proposed first meeting. So first draft in the first meeting. Before that, you have to circulate just before the meeting. All right, any other further comments on this? Otherwise, we'll move to, uh, is Fahd on the line, online? Okay. Okay, Fahd is online. Welcome, Fahd, to the all sick meetings. Uh, please go ahead with your uh, presentation. Uh, we are about uh, uh, 15, 20 people here. Uh, and you have about uh, uh, eight to ten minutes time. Okay, Fahd is coming online now. Hi, Fahd, can you hear us? Yeah, hi, Satish, I can hear you loud and clear. Great, so we can hear you as well. Please go ahead. You have about uh, nine to ten minutes to make your presentation. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you, Satish, and thank you all for inviting me. Um, so my name is Fahd. Um, I work for ICANN, uh, and I also work as part of the Secretariat for the Middle East and Adjoining Countries uh, School on Internet Governance. Thanks, Kai, you shared my, uh, my slides. So I'll, I'll, I'll run really, really quick uh, through my slides. Uh, I'm not sure if I have control over uh, moving to the next slide or not. Uh, do I, Kai? Okay. Okay, I think I can click from here. Yeah, so as a quick introduction uh, to our school, uh, to the Middle East and Adjoining Country School on Internet Governance, um, it was an idea that was suggested back in 2013 uh, by a group called the Middle East Strategy Working Group, who were working on some kind of a strategy uh, to enhance and, and, and better um, ICANN's engagement efforts uh, in the Middle East. Uh, now, the Middle East that we cover uh, consists of the 22 Arab states, Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. And that is why uh, some felt that maybe calling this region Middle East and adjoining countries suitable. Um, of course, it's a five-day school that covers many aspects of uh, internet governance. Um, there is a preschool homework. Uh, we have a website. We populate it with uh, lots of content. And uh, of course, after the school concludes, uh, we have a mailing list. Uh, we keep alumni um, engaged uh, with the different uh, uh, internet governance uh, related uh, activities around the world. Uh, of course, starting in 2018, this year, um, we embarked on a partnership uh, that I'll be exp uh, 
uh, sharing with you more uh, in a while. Um, so a quick, uh, so some quick statistics on the region. Uh, can we please go one slide back? Yeah, thank you. So some quick statistics on, on the MIAC region. So the 26 countries that I mentioned a while ago uh, have a total population of 824 million inhabitants of which approximately 324 million are online. So that is a little close to 40%, and that's of course less than the global average of around uh, 55%. Uh, now the first school on internet governance took place in Kuwait. Uh, it was the first school on internet governance happening in the Gulf region. Um, the second uh, uh, edition took place in Tunisia the third uh, in Beirut and Lebanon, uh, the fourth last year uh, in Ankara, Turkey. And actually after that school concluded, uh, we started receiving uh, interest from um, uh, different entities uh, willing to partner with us. And of course, uh, we always welcome partnership uh, with the SIG. Uh, we never branded it as an ICANN event uh, and we always wanted it um, I mean, we did spin it off uh, in, in coordination and close collaboration uh, with the Middle East Strategy Working Group, but we, but we never envisioned ourselves uh, to, to, to continue to, to uh, run it, let's say, or organize it on the long run. We, we really wanted other entities or stakeholders from within the region to actually uh, take lead on this uh, moving forward. And of course, ICANN continues to support it. So under this new partnership, uh, we have a couple of entities who are working on organizing this year's SIG. Um, so we have the Arab World Internet Institute, uh, RIPE NCC, uh, the Internet Society, uh, the Internet Governance Project, uh, and of course ICANN. So we have a plan that in two, by 2020, the entire secretariat of the school on, uh, of the MIAC School on Internet Governance uh, will be moving to the Arab World Internet Institute. Of course, the Internet Society plays a role in providing funds to the school and of course, uh, they, are, they, they have provided uh, their online uh, learning platform uh, so that participants can enroll in courses uh, before uh, the, the start of a SIG. Uh, RIPE and CC are providing funds and expertise. Uh, as for the Internet Governance Project, they are the ones who have actually developed uh, the curriculum uh, for this year's SIG. Uh, and moving forward, of course, they will be the ones who will uh, continue to develop the curriculum and, of course, um, uh, provide uh, suggestions for faculty members. ICANN uh, will continue to support the SIG as long as it's built in a bottom-up uh, multi-stakeholder fashion. Uh, and of course, um, uh, we will continue to sit, be part of this partnership. We will continue to be uh, a co-organizer. Uh, and of course, uh, we have a vision to move the, the, the secretariat from us uh, to the Arab World Internet Institute by 2020. Uh, this year's edition of MIAXIG will be taking place uh, in Cairo. Uh, it is hosted by the National Telecommunication Regulatory Authority of Egypt. Uh, and of course, this time around, we have a fully a dedicated website under the domain name uh, miaxig.org. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, before the partnership, we always had a steering committee who worked on developing the agenda um, scoring applications for applicants who applied to attend the uh, SIG uh, and of course uh, did a lot of many other stuff uh, leading uh, to the SIG. Uh, we will continue this trend uh, even uh, with the existence of, part, uh, of, of the different partners and of course the steering committee this year uh, consisted uh, of the different partners from the Arab World Internet Institute, ICANN, IGP, ISOC, RIPE, and CC. And of course, there was a nomination from the Middle East Strategy Working Group to actually nominate one member to sit on the steering committee for one year. And of course, we also reached out to the alumni network of MIAC SIG, asking them to nominate one member to, to join the steering committee for one year. And as always, we, always, we have a local host liaison who is responsible for on the ground uh, logistics and activities and of course the local host also has a responsibility of mobilizing 50% of the attendees uh, from within the local community. Uh, in terms of participation, uh, MIAXIG has always attracted somewhere between 30 to 40 participants. Uh, past experience has showed us that 
uh, if you exceed 40 participants uh, mark, it becomes quite challenging to actually uh, manage and maintain uh, the group. Um, uh, now, in terms of breakdown, we usually um, work on having 50% of the participants from the local community and the other 50% uh, from other countries within uh, the MIAC region. Uh, in terms of faculty, we always tried to have a large pool of faculty members from within the host country. However, in light of this partnership, and uh, since uh, the Internet Governance Project uh, uh, find it uh, very uh, extremely important to, to maintain a certain level of quality in terms of um, um, the, uh, the content delivered, um, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, 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 this aspect of choosing 50% uh, or more of the faculty from within the local community um, hasn't be, wasn't at least uh, maintained for, for the CSSIG. Um, we receive a large number of applications. Um, so in, in Beirut and in Ankara, we received a little close to 250 or even 300 applications. And of course, eventually we can only pick no more than 40 uh, uh, participants. And so it falls on the shoulders of the steering committee to actually score these applications uh, and select uh, the top uh, uh, participants. Of course, in, in order to, uh, we do keep in mind uh, maintaining geographic diversity um, and gender diversity. Stakeholder diversity is something we also strive, uh, but um, one thing we have uh, realized uh, over the years that uh, while a person can represent a certain stakeholder group, uh, many prefer to uh, show themselves as end users or civil society, because many of the applicants would, would prefer to attend the, the SIG in their personal capacity rather than representing uh, whatever institute or company they, they work for. Uh, we do have a couple, uh, some funds to support uh, travelers. Uh, in the past, we have supported a, a good number of travelers to uh, attend the SIG. Of course, in, in terms of supporting uh, uh, local uh, attendees, this is something we leave it to the local host uh, in terms of uh, finding funds and, and supporting them to attend. Uh, the agenda consists of a mix of topics. So uh, you will find uh, lectures, um, uh, panel discussions, uh, uh, role plays, uh, and of course, uh, many other different activities. Uh, in terms of the lectures, uh, they, cover, they usually cover many topics, uh, such as history and introduction to the internet or even internet governance, human rights and internet governance, uh, different stakeholder groups within the internet governance ecosystem, uh, digital rights, uh, uh, internet public policy, uh, digital economy and, and many other topics. Uh, this is the agenda we have for this year's SIG. Of course, uh, there might be some slight updates uh, as the SIG approaches. So the dates actually for the Cairo SIG is uh, 5 to 9 uh, August. So that's a little bit uh, less than uh, four weeks away from now. Uh, that's it for me. I hope I did not cross my 10 minutes. Uh, happy to take any questions if time permits. And if there are any questions, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Fahad, for that very interesting and enlightening presentation. We are opening the floor for questions. Uh, I would start with a couple of questions from our gender team here. Uh, they would like to know uh, the presence of women uh, in the organizing committee, in the, among the participants, and among the speakers. Okay, so that's an interesting question. Now, in terms of uh, steering committee members, we have always tried to maintain a gender balance, uh, males and females. Um, and of course, uh, and this has been maintained in the past. For this year, we had two members from outside of the core group uh, who joined actually uh, uh, for one year as steering committee members. Uh, one was a male and the other was a female. Uh, in terms of faculty, uh, to be honest with you, we strive uh, to create a gender balance. Uh, we don't. Uh, we are not successful in many instances, but that's because of the nature of of, of the region, really. Um, so the majority of internet governance uh, of people who actually understand uh, internet governance or even are experts at internet governance are mostly uh, male. Now, in terms of uh, participants, um, we do have a, a really good, uh, healthy uh, balance between uh, male and female participants, uh, and this and this is something we have maintained over the years. In fact. Uh, in order to encourage uh, more female participants to attend 
uh, while scoring the applications, usually um, uh, female applicants receive one extra grade uh, 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 in, the in their final score, uh, just in hopes of actually getting more uh, female applicants. Now, I remember when we did this in, in Lebanon in 2016, uh, the number of female participants that were selected to attend the school uh, were more than the male participants. Uh, but then last year, uh, we were able to maintain a healthy balance. So yes, uh, we, we strive uh, to keep a gender balance as much as possible. Thank you very much, Fahad. Uh, we now have uh, the queue. We have uh, Vakas from Pakistan raising the first question. Hello, Fahad. Um, thank you for the presentation. I have, I have two questions. One is, how different is MIAXIC from APIGA, um, APIGA that you do in South Korea every year? Uh, since ICANN is, used to be the secretariat for this, uh, what, what is different about it? Secondly, um, a lot of your sessions are actually group presentations or activities or breakout sessions. In fact, the la whole of the last day is, 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 a, is a group presentation. And, and what is that idea and how do you conduct that? OK, so two good questions. Now, on the difference between Miaxig and Apiga, they really cover two different regions in a nutshell. So Miaxig covers the Middle East. Uh, Apiga covers uh, Asia Pacific. Of course, sometimes Apiga does attract applications from West Asia because West Asia is part of Asia Pacific. And usually our colleagues from, uh, from the APAC region uh, communicate with us on that. And uh, we, we don't have any issues uh, with folks from our region in West, uh, let's say our part of West Asia uh, attending APIGA. Now, I think one of the key differences is that MIAXIG targets all age groups. Whereas I think, uh, and I, I stand to be corrected here, uh, APIGA really um, focuses on, or let's say targets mostly uh, youth. Uh, now, another third uh, fact is that APIGA is a partnership or let's say a joint project between ICANN and the uh, South Korean government. Uh, whereas MIAXIG is really some kind of an ad hoc event that is not related to any um, government or any uh, country. Uh, now to your second point on, uh, on, on, on the presentations. So yes, um, and, and, uh, we, we used to actually in the past fluctuate between having a role play uh, and having a presentation. So one year we would have a presentation, the other year we would have a role play. And it was really more of testing the grounds because, for example, if you go to the European Summer School on Internet Governance, it's a role play and you find people really engaged, but with different cultures and different backgrounds, in some instances you would find that our, our people are not very much engaged in role plays. And, and so uh, we, we were really testing. Now we found that the role play was really engaging, uh, but it consumed a lot of time. Um, and, 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 and of course, um, if we look at the role play that takes place at the European summer school or even the African summer school, uh, literally participants sit outside of, of the SIG hours uh, just uh, to come out with, uh, with solutions and create debates and discussions. Now in, in the Middle East, it's quite different. I mean, people tend to maybe do some excursions or, or just have some fun time after, after SIG hours, and, and we understand that. Now, when it came to presentations, we would just ask every participant uh, to provide a presentation of no more than 10 minutes to talk about a certain internet governance aspect within their countries. So I remember in the past, for example, we had a gentleman from Iran who spoke about the censorship and the filtering systems in, uh, in, in Iran. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, I mean, we had other folks from other parts of the region uh, covering different aspects of internet governance. So we would, in a nutshell, we would give participants the freedom to select a topic and to cover it within uh, 10 minutes. Right. Thanks very much for the next question is from Dr. Govind from India. Hello, Fahad. How are you? Hello, sir. How are you? Uh, it's fine. Uh, Fahad, my question is, I don't know whether it is already answered, how do you select the various topics in the internet governance courses? Okay, so we, uh, again, we go back. Uh, so in the past, before we had this partnership, uh, we used to go, uh, we, we used to do this through the steering committee. And of course, we used to sit together over teleconference calls and brainstorm what are the hot topics that are currently be, being uh, debated uh, within the IG ecosystem. Of course, when you look at uh, any SIG, you have core courses. So for example, when you talk about history of the internet or introduction to um, internet governance, or maybe 
the unique identifier systems of the internet. These are core topics that, that should be covered at every SIG. But then there are other topics that um, uh, differ, uh, differ in, in their priority uh, year over year. So for example, uh, today we, we talk a lot about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, internet of things, uh, fake news, but then maybe in two years time, uh, we will be talking about something different. So yeah, we have a mix of core courses and uh, fluctuating courses. And, 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 and uh, for, for these fluctuating courses, um, it's really the, it, it falls on the shoulders of the uh, program, uh, ste sorry, steering committee uh, to come out with. Now, with this new partnership, we have the Internet Governance Project who actually works on the agenda. Um, and, and they're really good at what they do. And uh, the way they do it is that they uh, suggest topics to us, uh, to the steering committee. And, and then the steering committee looks at them. And if there is any input, we just provide them with the input. So it's not much different than how we did in the past. It's all done within the steering committee. Um, thanks very much, Fahad. Are there any other questions? Yeah, so uh, thanks again, uh, Fahad, for joining us here at Bangkok uh, and giving us a very uh, interesting presentation and the answers to our questions. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks so much, Satish. Uh, thank you all. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. So now we move on to the third part of our uh, uh, all-sig meeting here. Uh, we have uh, discussions on some cross-cutting issues that affect uh, the region. Uh, and the first of this is uh, on internet shutdowns. It's by Dr. Govind, and uh, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, Satish, for giving me this opportunity here. Next slide, please. The, my topic is here, internet shutdown in India. Yeah, internet shutdowns are posing a growing concern on the face of the India moving towards the digital India program. And these shutdowns are increasingly used for curbing rumors and misinformation. Shutdowns are considered an easier way to solve a real security issue in the absence of any other viable alternatives. WhatsApp communications considered in indispensable to ensure privacy and security also benefits malicious actors challenging law enforcement agencies to curb destructions and loss of lives during turbulent times. Next, please. This is the graph showing the uh, shutdowns as uh, instances as well as for the number of hours from 2012 to 2017. And as we, uh, you can see that number of hours are increasing tremendously, even the number of instances are, say, uh, from three to 70 over the years. Next, please. This is the state-wise distribution of the number of hours, mobile and fixed line, how it has been affected the various states. The darker sta uh, uh, color st shows the states where the larger number of hours have been shut down and the lower uh, visibility is the for the lower hours of the shutdowns. Next, please. Yeah, this is the level of impact across the sectors of economy, like from manufacturing to the banking, healthcare, tourism, IT services, press and news, media, and e-commerce and freelancing. From the, from the, it is affecting not much in the manufacturing and heavy industries, but it is affecting the, as we go below, like e-commerce and freelancing and media, where it is affecting the modes because of the shutdowns. Next, please. Here we are showing the total hours of mobile network shutdown. Earlier we had shown your fixed line plus mobile. Now it is only mobile shutdowns with the darker color showing the larger number of hours where the lesser, the uh, other colors are showing the lesser number of hours. Next please. This is the economic impact of internet shutdowns which has been calculated in millions of dollars from for five years from 2000 to 2017 and again where there are it may it is uh, the darker color like Gujarat and some part of the uh, Odisha and showing the more number of economic losses compared to the other colors which are less in the Jammu and Kashmir 
and in the Rajasthan and in the UP area. Next please. Here it is showing the nature of shutdowns like uh, whether it is preventive action or a reactive action. There are two types of shutdowns which we have worked out. In some cases the law enforcement agency, the district magistrate of the, of the city or the area goes for the preempting that there might be some kind of trouble so they put a shutdown or they put out the put off the internet ISPs to shut down the internet and there are the reactive action if some incidents happens in certain areas and it is goes out of control then they act on the shutdowns. Next please. This is a process which is on, I will not go how the the process is involved in a city or an area from who are the competent authorities and how it uh, drills down to the lowest person, how it is done in the shutting down the area person. Next please. Some solutions uh, which has been worked out or uh, is the, which has been rather more guidelines like imposition of shutdown should be a gradual process rather than just do a shutdown immediately or suddenly in area in an area you should see the how the trouble develops in particular area then slowly you work on that rather than you put entire area on the shutdown uh, premises next is bring greater transparency and accountability in the process whether people are not knowing in that particular area or in particular city what for the whole shutdown has been made here whether what incidents has happened, whether it can be localized or it needs a larger uh, process to be shut down in a larger area of that city. Third is the general public be informed about the duration and intent of shutdowns. In most of the cases what happens that general public is not aware that some shutdown is happened because unless they look at their mobile or their internet, mobile or in the, in the laptop and all. So the information flow is not uniform or at a time it is not uh, there in the in the in the process when the shutdowns are made then we have the multi stakeholder community must work toward a under, to undertake a study of the actual impact of the in internet on spreading rumors and misinformation before during and after the law order breaks down so this has been suggested that uh, the the stakeholders of the society like civil society, the business community, media, the government should sit together to work out why particular reason was made a shutdown, what was the reason and whether we can avoid that in the next time. So that requires a kind of study, uh, some kind of research undertaking. So otherwise what happens again, uh, repeatedly these shutdowns are made in the country and no lessons are taken from one area to another area. Need for adequate research in this space is what stalls dialogues with the government on edit addressing internet shutdowns. So often what happens, the law enforcement agencies and the government are quick to go for a shutdown without going into the, because their, their need is to uh, see that, you know, uh, loss of manpower or loss of the murders or other killings are avoided as fast as possible. But whether it can be avoided through dialogues, whether it can be avoided through other means in the society, through conversations with the various groups in the community, that process has to be evolved over the time if we want to have a meaningful dialogue with the government on this kind of shutdown. Next, please. So these are the two references, the two elaborate books, uh, reports have come out in the country that living in the dark, digital darkness, a handbook on internet shutdowns in India by sflc.in and the other is the anatomy of an internet blackout measuring the economic impact of internet shutdowns. Both these reports have come out this May, April and May this year. These are very useful to see that how these two reports, one is bringing the economic impact and another is bringing the what kind of shutdowns and why the shutdowns are doing. Thank you. Yeah. First question is, uh, is there a legislative backing for these shutdowns? Is there a law that says this is, this is lawful? And secondly, is there a consultative process in place where the multi-stakeholder process 
uh, at least civil society is kind of uh, consulted before a shutdown or is it a completely executive decision opaque to everybody else yeah first question is the is there any executive order to shut down there is there is legal, a uh, DOJ, legal procedure yeah there is a procedure that's what i legal, legal, legal law, law. There, there is a procedure in the department of Te telecommunications how to isps have to be shut down and when and why that this is properly followed by the district magistrate and when certain thing he takes the decision and then it goes to the isp the internet service providers and mobile operators and telcos what specific part of that particular i i'm not having here it here but i can f provide that no, it is very legally provided in the country for that shutting down part of the thing the regulator and doesn't give orders the the, the, the local government a, does regulator oh. it's a de regulator only department okay, okay. of telecommunication uh, there they have evolved. There, uh, there was a slide if you uh, regarding the process yeah. if you can move to that yeah the Yes, here it is the secretary to the home ministry on the top here you can see and the or the secretary home department state whether it is center or state then review in 24 hours joint secretaries or above joint secretaries in the authorized in the home the state government and they authorize the TSPs, ISPs, telegraph authority under a telegraphic act that under this and this law you have to shut down for a particular area. And then the review committees are there, but as an often it happens that you know review committees take effort after the things have happened, not before that. And the second question which you asked is: Is there any civil society goes for any review process before and after the shutdown? Is it the question? Yeah. The unfortunately we don't have. There is a civil society. There are other stakeholders, but they do not analyze the whole thing prior to that because if anything happening in the society say riots are going to happen or any any bombardment is going to happen civil society has no clue what are the things happening in the that particular area so there is a need to have a kind of uh, some kind of uh, information <coughs> providing to the civil societies for that particular matter can i comment yes uh -huh. Dr. Govin, you made a big mistake by looking at this, this PowerPoint part, it's very impressive, okay? If it's lousy, it's okay, you didn't make anything. You made a very good uh, PowerPoint. So you definitely made a big mistake not to have a one-hour case study session here. We should have discussed it. Okay. Because it's not just an Indian issue, okay? I mean. Pakistan, you do, and also Sri Lanka, and the, the Bangladesh and Nepal, I mean, just so you, you, you would do it. Second, <clears throat> uh, you should have proposed, as I recommended, mm -hmm. the, uh, 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 make a pro workshop proposal at the IGF to discuss this issue, okay? I have uh, so much comment, okay? And, uh, but uh, so is the many other people. And uh, so the, you should have written down the uh, proposal so that we can discuss this issue at, uh, over there. It's almost like a, we should have a, like a half day or one day workshop. You, we have so much content. So the, okay, if you agree on that you made a mistake, okay? <laughs> uh, you have to make a the recovery process. <laughs> yeah, please do. Uh, definitely next year case study, yeah. uh, you should do it. And uh, it may be uh, more than the one hour. Yes. Because ask those uh, Sri Lanka and uh, the, uh, Regulator Pakistan is and other country to make a comment. And also we, we may invite somebody. I can just point it out right immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, some other scheme. And uh, you may even invite uh, China. Mm -hmm. Okay, if this is an Indian station, Chinese, what would you do? And the, their technology is very high. They can probably uh, 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 suggest much better technology than the, this scheme. Now again, just here. Yes. Okay? And also the uh, uh, next year, IGF. 
You should do it. <laughs> but I was not sure of no, whether no, I would no, be able no. to go there or not. That was a no, no. I I know this is a very important topic. That's why two reports have come out very recently. No, yeah. <laughs> Again, Dr. Govind, uh, they have, uh, that you mentioned, there are two methods, uh, preventive shutdown and uh, reactive shutdown. Yeah. Uh, mostly in our, our country, we had a preventive shutdown, which was uh, in March. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a huge uh, effect in economy and uh, as well as uh, tourism industry. So not, is only related, not only limited to those, but <clears throat> Uh, our when we are consulting the our government after this issue the what they thought is there is a, a rule in india law in india where that we are going to imp, uh, use in our country uh, as soon as possible so this is a danger that where that we need to stand as a region <laughs> Yes. Do, do, Dr. Govan, can you explain this surge uh. in, on slide number three after the 2015? Yeah. Uh, in, in, slide number three. What happened in this period that the internet shutdowns shot up from 907 to 6,784? Um, was there a new, was there a web management solution installed or something else, else happened? The duration, that is the peculiarity of this graph where we have re re really shown Though incidents may be showing in two-digit numbers, but the number of hours in particular area is much higher. Yeah, that is okay. But like, what kind of shutdowns were happening in that period? Because suddenly there is a big, huge jump in but the... A, a, a nature of shutdowns. Yes, yes. Nature of shutdowns were more like in disturbances in Darjeeling area and disturbances in the Haryana area for some kind of uh, Hindu guru was arrested and large hue and cry started. So, you know, larger period of shutdowns are to be made to make the situation calm down in that particular area. And certain shutdowns, I agree that, like in Darjeeling, it was more political because they started for a language. They didn't, they wanted to have their own Gorkha language rather than Bangla imposed on them. So, you know, that, that took 90 days, you know, hell of mm -hmm. a long days to shut down. And, and, they, and you can imagine the 90 days is a period where, you know, you will be killed even if you are not killed physically. This data is from the book, right? Yeah, from the oh, book. Okay. okay, now the time is good. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Gauvin, my question is, uh, you have put some solution on the side 11. Can yeah. you go back to that? Can you bring side, side, side 11? 11? My time is uh, still there or not? Uh, no, side 10, slide 10, this is reference. There were some solutions. 10, 10, before that. Previous one. Previous one, yes. Yeah, so yeah. in the, that third bullet, uh, you were talking about the multi-stakeholder community must work together to undertake a yeah, fourth one and third one. So my first question is, uh, like, while you are having those shutdowns, are there any kind of opposition, like uh, legal lawsuits or something like that happens against the government? Like... Uh, Businessman. No, uh, no, because there was no analysis of that kind of done in the by the civil society or by any group. Only we seen only the observation how long the disturbances, how long they shut down, what is the economic impact of that, and also one of the findings which I have not able to brought it here in the this is there in the report that the big cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai they didn't have the shutdowns ever. Only the smaller towns have suffered more than the bigger towns. Because the bigger towns knows that they cannot be shut down in longer period because of the political reasons or capital. So it is the smaller towns which are suffering more from the shutdown, like Darjeeling or the Hisar in Haryana or some part in Kashmir or Jammu, which are suffering more because of that, then nobody is going to look into that aspect. And there is a need to have a good dialogue process by the community. So what is the role of internet society in this regard in India? Not much right now because internet society has to work with the mm -hmm. other communities and uh, often what happens the dialogue process the government takes an upper hand says no you don't know about the security we are we are the person who what is happening on the spot. So. Excuse me. Uh, yes, please, go ahead. Yes. 
Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Govind, very interesting studies and uh, uh, interesting comments as well. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, the other day we were discussing uh, here on the sidelines that uh, I, I would like, I'm not sure that whether it was you or someone else. Uh, you discussed here the cost analysis and very interesting analysis, economic cost and the other cost as well. Uh, did you see any study coming up from the government side or any uh, any other side uh, stating the, what were the benefits of these shutdowns? No, Go government yeah. government only looks into the basically the if there are certain kinds of riots and more human losses are there because they consider human losses more important than the economic losses. So, so yes, that was that was my point. That the government gives reasons that for what reasons? Uh, often it is the national security or the security reasons hmm. uh, that we are uh, shutting down the internet. Uh, but we don't often see the benefits. That what benefits were taken after these uh, shutdowns happened in in specific region? Yeah, uh, the the answer can be two uh, twofold. One is the losses from the uh, human angle point of view and another from the economic point of view. That, that the government looks into more into the human losses, as I said, than the uh, economic losses. I think people are also human rights commissions and other, they're worried more about the, if anyone is killed in that right, so there will be more hue and cry than even a more amount of money is spent in that kind of thing. Right, thanks. Uh, the last question, uh, you want to speak? Okay, uh, after this, please go ahead. Uh, Dr. Govind, this is Yana Jaraman. Uh, you mentioned uh, some of the things India has happens for the surroundings there, no? The southern part of India, I think in Chennai, for the Jallikattu protest, we have the nearly five days surround. And the uh, southern part of Tamil Nadu, Tutikurin, is a sterilite problem. We have the one week of surround, network surround, and the 11 people will start dead. For, uh, this happens on the last month only. Mm -hmm. Uh, the purpose we have the sudden means uh, stopping and producing the rumor of and, uh, some of the fake news that's all. But uh, that time, uh, government officials also not communicating with their higher officials that we are opening or not. Inclusion of power sudden also is there. That time, uh, all the things will be happens for 144. 144. Yeah. yeah. How is uh, possible to, to control some of the region, some of the location only we have to protect? This happens on only four surrounding kilometers only. But the surroundings happens on six districts. So you want to uh, confine it to smaller yes. areas? It depends on how, how, what are the spread of the rumors, spread of the you know killings, riots, or the lootings going on in particular area. Yeah. I think it is a whole, I mean, wisdom of the district magistrate of that place, which is decides about the nature and the you know the extent of shutdowns which has to be made. Unfortunately, no civil society or anyone is taken into account or uh, takes into dialogue in this process, in the whole process. Uh, uh, so you say, happens because the immediate uh, worry for them is to, we had a live show, a live discussion there in Delhi. Immediate worry is that, you know, no human life should be lost in this kind of thing. Immediate worry is that, and rumor should be stopped, any kind of thing. But uh, it happens only for four square kilometers only for the correct of South Tutti Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, I don't know whether technically you can stop out of that or in a uh, localized area, spread of the internet in that. That is where the uh, Killam has said, you know, you should see how the, it can be localized the uh, shutdown process in particular area of the region rather than entire area can. Like I remember there was a, I have a time, I, I, even in the school, they have shut down internet because there were copying who are going on. So they could have, not allowed the mobile to be going into that, rather than shutting down the internet in that area. So these are the things where you know one should have a dialogue with the authorities slowly and educate them, and then work out the processes in future. Thank you. Last yeah. Year, this last year, I was supposed to uh, save this uh, school during uh, yeah. shutdown incident in India. Uh, in Nepal also, uh, during um, uh, people's movement in 2006, there was uh, internet shut down, not only internet, all the communication channels were uh, down. That was uh, almost like uh, killing the, all the suites. Uh, 
so uh, in, in this part of all uh, most of the internet shutdowns are very arbitrarily and and that was uh, used uh, for the benefit or for, uh, to protect interest uh, uh, arbitrary interest of rulers or administrators that is the major uh, exp um, observation i find uh, on all these internet shutdowns thank you thank you so this is yeah, so this is right because if the mix of the reactions in the in the country like India where Darjeeling is more of a political nature but in certain other areas it may be more of a physical killing peop uh, uh, kind of thing or to avoid some rumors in that particular area. So it's a mix. One has to write, one has to also study the what kind of, uh, I mean, if an event happened in that particular area that can be another graph of that kind what phenomena took place so that shutting down has started in that particular area we have to work out that yeah Gobin, uh, yeah last question or not this is my comments i don't uh, know this Charlie. is up to the chairman <laughs> Gobin, thank you very much uh, you address the right question and right situation same pr problem facing also bangladesh also mm -hmm. uh, last year uh, our uh, government decide one day to whole country internet shutdown because of that higher secondary school exam before some uh, those criminal guys publish the social media the question before this is the very huge last two or three years we are facing same problem those is very happening and uh, government uh, took serious uh, what can we do the, uh, this problem we were also facing this is my question yeah so question okay so this is a this is the you know the when when the internet is shut down then you are not, communication is not there so all kinds of rumors otherwise takes place and then you know question paper yeah. leaking and you know those kind of things takes place people are not knowing what to do this kind of situation so th this is a byproduct of this kind of shutdowns and you know without knowing what is happening around and kind of thing uh, thank you, Dr. Govind. It is a very uh, interesting discussion. So uh, we didn't want to stop the discussion, which is why we have left it uh, overflow a little bit. So Professor Chon tells me that we can go until 6 o'clock. So we didn't want to impede your discussions. Thank you very much for your very interactive session. Okay. Uh, we now thank you very much. Thank you. We now move on to Shridhi, who will be speaking to us about youth and SIGs. Um, yeah, 10 minutes you have. <clears throat> so uh, basically, youth and SIG, uh, is, uh, it came from uh, the whole concept of how we are going to involve more youth into uh, the SIG and how we are going to encourage them. So uh, as we did the session uh, today morning, so we'll be taking the feedback from here to IGF as we have a session there as well. And in between the meantime, uh, we are planning to do a research about uh, about how youth can be more, uh, you know, what, what youth choices and preferences are in regards to SIG or how we can engage them, right? So because a lot of the times, uh, um, you know, so whenever School of Internet Governance happens, uh, it's my personal experience that during the Nepal SIG, what I felt was a lot of the students were, you know, they, 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 they just uh, could not engage. Right? They, they, they wanted more interactive things. They wanted more things uh, like which they could relate to. More case studies, more data. So that is how, you know, um, I was, uh, I have perceived this. And I probably the, uh, you know, the IGF uh, discussion will further prolong. And next year we'll also have the full focused uh, report on that. Uh, so if you have any questions, please. Was a uh, IEEE student chapter on the CS issues, doctor, suppose IST, some of the student chapter is there. Why cannot you can take for student chapter to the engagement of uh, youth six? Sorry, I didn't get you. Engaging youth six, we have to take for the, some of the things, student uh, chapter think, especially. I'll explain that. Uh, see, some of these organizations like IEEE, which is an international organization, the Computer Society of, in this case, yes. India, so these have chapters at the school college levels. So his question was whether we can link up to these things. 
these chapters? Yeah, sure, we, we can do that. Um, because ultimately we want their interest and in how we can get more people engaging, right? Ultimately the whole uh, purpose is or objective is to engage people and how we can motivate them to you know, get into the IG and play their parts. Because, uh, you know, in today we heard that uh, a lot of the youths from the South, the, the Western world, they are more into gaming. But in our world, it's not. It's growing, right? So we have to find their interest. So it, 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 it's, quite, it's quite different in different parts of the world. So even in India, the youths are quite different than in Nepal, right? So we need to bridge that. We need to create, we need to find the indicators or factors that are individually working so that we can work in creating a better SIG, targeting them, whether it's for youth IGF or IGF or whether it's a policy development process. So it's overall, you, we are trying to develop how, you know, find out standards about how we can get them in and what their interests are. Uh, Sridhar, same time, the engagement after the events uh, of youth are minimum. Even though we invited uh, many youth, we train them. So, but after the initial period, their engagement is very low. How we can continue? So, uh, I think in lot of our part of the world, uh, youth, you know, they are subsidized. They are not given the opportunity. First thing, they are thought to be as a threat. I seriously mean this. You know, in a lot of the internet organization, how many of the organization promote youth things, activities? In, or whether it's like leadership, it is growing. I completely accept it is growing, but we need to further focus on creating their engagement. You know, I remember this, last year Shahul was here, right? This year he's in the thing, and he kept on communicating. He was talking to me, you know, he was like, he wanted to get engaged. So we, we have to find these kind of people who can give focused results, who can come up, who, who is working in NCUC, he's doing great work. So at least one person stood up. So th these are the activities and we have to show them, we have to mentor them, we don't train them. We have to mentor them, we have to coach them, we have to tell them where the fellowship are or how they can achieve uh, you know, youth IGF or what are the standard protocols or what should be their baselines. Because an IGF, a SIG or an IGF can start, but for a long run, we need to develop a standard. We need to work on what you know, basic indicators are. Uh, I do agree with my, my two cents is uh, how to connect with the people who have already participated. There might be one or two people, but for example, in Pakistan, Wakas was saying that uh, there was three consecutive uh, SIG. Uh, how can we connect with those people who already participated and see how they have been doing, what their needs are, and what kind of, because, this is also kind of uh, tracking the output after the SIG. We need to track how much we were able to provide and what was the outcome. So in terms of, in terms of Nepal also, this is a proposal. Uh, even after the uh, SIGs, we keep continued uh, uh, connecting with these people. Earlier we talked about WhatsApp group and others. And maybe after some time, we see what is the, uh, we can uh, uh, see the outcome. Another thing is uh, when we are talking about youth, we have to also look at the bigger picture of digital divide. There, are, there is geographical thing, there is economic strata and other things. So there are people, we are, most of the time we are organizing this six in the uh, central location, having good internet access, having good uh, logistic support. So many people from the other areas are not coming. So how can we connect with the uh, youth outside these easy locations? how we can ensure their participation. And this is not only with the SIG uh, and the uh, APSIG thing, but uh, there are now we, we have been working, Internet Society Nepal was supporting one uh, research in Nepal about the how internet is covered in the curriculum of Nepali curriculum. Uh, if there is a curriculum designed in a way about the values of the internet and the standard of the internet uh, and the uh, ITC, then they will be knowing about these values and standard from there also. So how to connect with the curriculum and apart from this work, we have to uh, link up with the academician, universities, curriculum development boards, so that 
they have the basic foundation apart from these uh, ad hoc events. Uh, we felt this uh, thing last time when uh, we are doing the same. So what we did was we tried to introduce the safe internet module into the uh, ca uh, national curriculum. Still government is uh, like, uh, <laughs> they not uh, like to accept these things. But uh, we, if we make a voice more, advocate more, I believe we can do. So, so this is kind of things that we could, uh, again, we could do. And again, you mentioned that regarding the, uh, giving the opportunity to the youth after the uh, six and all. Actually, th that is a barrier. The, some uh, fellowships, some kind of events, some kind of uh, uh, organizations has uh, uh, not that fluid and not given chance to uh, youth. So it's a terrible thing that youth will never get the leadership practice even. Yeah, uh, and... Can you take, can you take uh, the remaining things also to respond at once? Save time. Okay. Take okay. I also have a just a quick uh, example from our own uh, experience. After Nepal IGF and uh, uh, NPSIG, uh, we promoted a uh, few uh, young people, so if you also uh, rem might be remembering. Uh, in, during uh, NPSIG, we also negotiated with NPIX, an organizer of APRICOT, and they got uh, two fellowships for apricot. The entrance itself is 200 USD each of that apricot. So uh, participant of uh, NPC, uh, though those who were actively participating in NPC got fellowship in that. And uh, coincidentally, the, uh, APC, uh, two APC participants, uh, Rojina and Surendra, they were also participant of uh, NPC. So uh, now, now, previously, uh, Sridip and me were here. Pre previously, Sridip uh, only uh, they're in first edition of APSIG. Now, from Nepal, we have more participants. So this is the way that we can engage more people in the process. Uh, uh, sometimes it might be a peer group. Sometimes it might be a junior or younger than uh, you. That important thing is whether you are facilitating uh, those enthusiasts or not. That is the main uh, thing that you, we have to consider these things. Th this is the way that we can engage more people in the process. Thank you. Uh, okay, speak. Suppose increasing the fellowship for students, students' fellowship increases, uh, students are willing to join IP and IPC and uh, APC also, and the IG for activities. Uh, the students will be seeking for fellowship means if we can get more and more people they engage with that they have to work on that and their research perspective also we can get the a good uh, reputation and the good outcomes also the future leaders will be automatically generated yes okay. my comment. thank you for that uh, uh, my own uh, results have been kind of mixed uh, but before that the student uh, thing uh, i think maybe pg or phd candidates are good for ap sig below that it's very difficult to accommodate an ap sig um, now, coming back to this issue of uh, young people, we did a program called uh, IG for IG, uh, Internet Governance for the Internet Generation. Uh, Shahul, uh, that you mentioned, was one of them. Uh, today, he is one of our, uh, he is our secretary, our uh, ISOC uh, chapter secretary. However, uh, uh, my experience has been that many of the young people are bored when you talk, about, talk to them about Internet Governance. You talk to them about Internet, they are interested. About various other aspects, they are interested. Safe uh, browsing, they are interested. But internet governance is a topic. We need to discover some way to make it more interesting and engaging. Yeah, so, uh, you know, after listening to all of you, you know, like the standard practice that has been there is growing, right? It is growing. But there are various parts of the uh, South Asia where uh, youth are still struggling. And we need to find those indicators, those, uh, you know, those values. Uh, when Waka said entrepreneurship works, many of us could not uh, relate to, right? So every country has its own ways. So that's where, you know, uh, this uh, session or this uh, research comes in hand. So we're gonna floor uh, some questions, some uh, thing to go into evolution. You know, the, the practice has been good, yes, but we need more people. You know, as Satish Ji said, 
there is no interest, so we need to find the interest. How we are going to drive it, you know, that, that is the thing. And apart from that, yes, yes, APSIG is original event, we, we need to, but we can engage people in the meetings and, you know, we can get those people running. And, uh, and uh, the basic thing uh, is uh, for people like us who are standing here, we can initiate. You know, the main idea is to motivate leaders who are standing here to do their own grassroots level initiatives. That is more important so that things can be running. Thank you very much, Shridip. Uh, we have run out. You want to? 10 seconds. Uh, ten seconds. OK. Uh, I think the outcome should not be calculated only on the basis of whether somebody is uh, participating in the higher level forum or not. One example is there was one guy, journalist in the uh, Nepal SIG. And he was also part of the Nepal IGF. And he is currently writing on internet governance in the paper regularly. So that is the outcome. We have to also internalize the values. It is not only participation in the bigger forum, going to the program and other thing, but how people understood the, uh, understand the value of the internet governance. That is more important. So thank you very much. I think we all of us agree that youth engaging with the youth is very important. And we will take this dialogue forward. Now with this, we come to the last bit of the all -Sig meeting, which is about gender. Uh, now, Amrita, who I assume is online, will start off uh, with the gender and SIG angle, and then we have uh, uh, Sagarika and her team, who's uh, maybe Sun Young is there uh, to speak. So they will be speaking uh, after Amrita on this issue. In fact, I would ask him to take over the session, the rest of it. We have about 30 minutes in this session. Thank you, Satish. Um... I'll try to restrict my part to less than 15. Um, okay, can we have the slides? Thank you. Um, I know it's late in the day and most of you are tired and uh, gender is the last session as happens always. Uh, you can put it on screen share mode, um, okay? As in slide show, you don't have to show the subtitles. So uh, the basic objective of this discussion is primarily to uh, take stock of the initiatives undertaken by the various uh, national school of internet uh, governance uh, in our region um, and what efforts are making the you know are, what processes they have included to make it more gender inclusive uh, try and see what works in some SIGs uh, and what doesn't in some SIGs and highlight the best practices hey can you show it on a presentation mode please i don't want the um, write-ups to be shown we, we can't see the, the write-ups we can only see the main slides okay 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 thank you uh, can we go to the next slide so uh, why is it important to have gender inclusion at six um, you know undoubtedly there is a growing um, gender divide there are discriminations being fa faced by women, by people from different communities, um, even with um, and also people with disabilities. And that is why they, their thoughts and views are not being taken into consideration in mainstream technical and internet uh, governance discussion. Um, the importance of including uh, gender in the dialogue or including uh, more uh, people from the gender perspective at SIG is to build capacity across gender and not only towards one section uh, of the gender, to facilitate and empower women and other disadvantaged groups, to encourage greater representation in public policy, and to have diversity of thoughts when decision making is uh, decisions are made. Currently, many a times decisions which are made are skewed. Um, and for um, having a balanced decision, it is very important that all people can share their views. And that is why it is important. And six, the objective of SIGS is to build capacity in the region. If certain segments, crucial segments are lost, it totally means that we are failing somewhere. Can we go to the next slide? Amrita. The yeah. Zoom laptop is actually acting up, but uh, I'm I'm showing your screens in the room. Okay, okay, okay. So um, if you look at the current scenario of gender inclusion at six, um, the picture is not all that healthy. Um, 
I I have been trying to capture the information from the presentations and the website of the National SIG. Um, the idea of empowering women and other disadvantaged groups to participate and you know give them the right space and enabling and rendering them a greater voice in decision making is important. So if we look at uh, the snapshot of the um, various SIGs, national and AP SIG, uh, in the picture or the report card is not too healthy. If we look at participation, um, uh, last year, APSIG had the uh, had relatively higher participation of women than other SIGs, which was around 43%. Um, if we look at management level, uh, Nepal SIG was the only one who had transgender participant. I'm not aware of any other school having any transgender participants. In terms of management, if we look at it, um, INSIG is better off than most uh, other SIGs in terms of having at least the steering committee having uh, uh, some women participation. If we look at curriculum, um, there has been focused gender related curriculum or gender related issues which um, which are important from public policy, which has been discussed in some of the six, while few did not have or could not have some uh, um, a session. Uh, that is a concern primarily because um, there are various issues which um, related to gender, related to disability, related to um, security of women online or their access, uh, which is important to, to be discussed. Uh, in terms of speaker, I was not able to get adequate information of um, from BD SIG or even um, the China SIG um, on the number of speakers they had vis-a-vis um, -vis the total speakers. But whatever I could gather is shown in the table. I hope you can see the table. Um, so the next, uh, if you go to the next slide. Um, I have left it purposefully blank because I'd like to hear from the SIG representatives as to what is the um, what is your action points to improve the gender inclusion in terms of participation speakers at the you know at the management level or have topics related to gender being discussed at your upcoming SIGs. So I leave it open to you all to at least share. This is not something which is, um, if you really want to have an inclusive society, you really need to think about it. It should not be just lip service. So I uh, open it up for anyone to, you know, the SIGs to share what you plan to do to improve this uh, bad report card, I would say. We have been judged uh, and we are bad. So <laughs> the question is, how do we improve our gender performance? Uh, are there any quick comments before we pass it on to Sagarika? So uh, in your uh, presentation, it shows that we have not included uh, accessibility because in SIG we didn't include uh, accessibility because we have a separate forum in IGF. Yeah, we have the sign language interpreter throughout the SIG uh, because we have uh, included the ac uh, uh, disabled sector. And so we have the separate uh, session for the uh, accessibility uh, and ac as accessibility forum in Sri Lanka 2017. So that was uh, missing in this presentation. Thank you. Okay. Amrita um, Vakas here. I'd actually put the question back to you um, because if you look at the SIGs from the general point of view that I have been able to assess so far, every SIG is open to women participation, right? Um, we welcome women to come and learn about IG. Uh, we of also offer fellowships and everything. But like I mentioned earlier, there are some cultural and some local barriers to this thing as well, which may not be applicable to AP SIG for that matter because it covers the whole Asia Pacific and beyond, so that is why the part participation level is also high. Uh, you also represent women, say, um, the, 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 that is a um, special interest group. Have you actually looked into these things and 
have you worked on this issue to find out some of the solutions as to how we as SIGs could improve this situation? Um, because we are open to it for it um, and we are also trying for it in a way that we are offering fellowships, we are encouraging women participation. Uh, but how, how, do we, how do we go about it? What is your take on this, being the representative of uh, women's SIG? Okay, so let me clarify. By gender, gender doesn't mean only women, firstly. So gender means... Okay, okay, I get uh, it. So, okay, so let's just call it gender. <laughs> now coming to... So now coming to... Yeah, because if it's a gender related, it's always trust to women. So let, that's point number one. Point number two, yes, there are sociocultural um, inhibitions which also um, make women in certain communities reluctant to participate. However, um, in these kind of situation, we did a study sometime back and we had circulated uh, you know, our findings too. Um, it's important to have a very top-down approach. You need to have women, and I'm sure there are capable women in all your countries who can get uh, attached. Try to encourage um, you know, other women or others, you know, or even um, the people from who have accessibility and you know get into the community encourage them perhaps you might have um, a fellowship but many of them do not even come to know of it you reach 10 and they say no but whereas if you reach 100 you'll get 10 so your, the efforts need to be um, multiplied if you really want to make it inclusive there would be hits and runs there are some places it works well um, so that's somewhere where common sharings can happen or, you know, suggestions can be passed on between communities uh, or between SIGs as what works, what doesn't work and um, try to use best practices as in this has to be a collaborative effort and it is not going to change overnight. However, there has to be some initiation somewhere. Uh, thank you, Amrita. Uh, I think uh, we uh, are kind of sensitive to this issue. Generally, there is agreement across the uh, the table in the room that uh, we need to work on this a little harder. Um, uh, now we would like to move on with uh, to Sagrika and uh, her broader gender points. Uh, over to you, Sagrika. Thank you, Amrita. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Satesh. Uh, thank you, Amrita, for your inspiring uh, presentation regarding the gender and women. Uh, so, Women Sig Initiative. Uh, why we do this? So, I have to tell that. So, while participating in uh, APSIG 2018, so we have witnessed very few women are in this room uh, still. So we wanted to have the uh, women participation more. We are not uh, fighting for the equal rights. We are, <laughs> we are fighting for the, uh, the be better place for us. So basically women are the fundamental stakeholders of the information society and we play a very crucial role. And also uh, IT is important for IGF to fully integrate gender concerns and its work, uh, especially the SIGs. So, so I would like to have this forum witness with the, our male counterparts to see where we are and what, why we need the women SIG in this room. So we, that is why we are trying to initiate this. Next slide, please. So, as uh, women professionals, we need to have a place to discuss common internet-related issues faced by our female professionals. And as well as, we need to find role models to lead awareness and education, mainly the advocacy. So, and also we need to enrich the uh, diversity and inclusion in I, IG discussions because uh, with my experience when we talk about the internet governance in our country most of the women are not aware of, aware of it. What is governance? What is IT governance, special internet governance? So that is why we need to educate more women. Next slide please. So current situation. 
So less women participation in SIGs. If we take out uh, the statistics from uh, FACG female participation, you can see in 2016, out of 39, only 15. So uh, 2017, out of 51, only 19. 2018, it's worse than that. Out of 50, only 13. So uh, you can see the, the ratios in between the gender uh, current things. And so we, have, we are hearing lack of women voices and representation of women specific issues in view of general issues. Uh, and lack of awareness on women regarding SIGs and IGs. Less opportunities for women. So basically, uh, females, they are like, by nature, they are afraid to raise their voice. They always try to be perfect. But men are not like that by nature, so sociologically. So they are very brave. They, they, are, they do not fear of failure. But we, as females, we were always trying to do everything perfectly. That is where we fail. So that is what I think. So next slide, please. <laughs> so that is what we, why we are trying to overcome this fear. So future plans. So we are trying, we need more advocacy programs for women in IG and SIGs to promote and educate women to be participate in these sort of events. And more technical workshops for women to country level. So though we are having so many like uh, female undergraduates or female graduates from the technical fields, very less women are participating uh, workshops like this and even the technical jobs, they are taking technical jobs. If we have more technical workshops for women in country level, I think the perfectness or fear we are having that may be faded away gradually. Mental clinic with SIG to promote women in IG initiatives. That is very important. If we are having the mental clinics, uh, that will be change their mentality and we can have more women. And also, network of women in SIG participants. Like today, we had uh, networking. That is why we are here today. So we were insisting that we need uh, to raise our voice in these sort of uh, platforms. So that is what I wanted to talk me initially. And there were some insights from our participants who uh, uh, leave early from this uh, room. This is, uh, Soya from Mongolia. Hi everyone, I'm Zalsoya from Mongolia. I participated in APSIG 2018. And during the APSIG, we as the girls, we came up with the idea of uh, women SIG and women IGF. So uh, I, as an economist, I believe that if we utilize the whole population uh, including the woman, then we can achieve a better performance. So the diversity is very important for every kind of meetings and every kind of sex. So that's why we came up with the uh, um, idea of woman in uh, woman in woman IGF, and um, yeah, that's it, I guess. So next, uh, Dr. Nadia from Pakistan. Hi. Um, this is Nadia from Pakistan, and uh, I'm here at Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance 2018. And uh, here we are with uh, with this uh, opinion, and this came up with a group uh, where we are with the view that uh, there should be a gender diversity in uh, Internet Governance forums. Uh, uh, and uh, also the women representation and equal women representation that is important for the decision making uh, at, uh, related to internet policy and other rel relevant issues. So I very much support this idea of having a gender diversity and this women uh, SIGs uh, and uh, inclusion in the Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance. Thank you. So now the uh, floor is open. Uh, anyone from the remote participation? Hello. Sorry. Amita. Can you hear me? So yes, uh, if they want, they can talk. Uh. 
Yes, Amrita. Amrita, it's your chance. Yeah. Um, yeah, as in, in, I don't think anyone disputes that there should be um, diversity in um, a SIG. However, you know, it would be interesting to hear from the SIG chairs how they feel, uh, you know, what is the best way, or even Professor Chon, if, if he can share some um, thoughts on how um, gender inclusion can kind of increase uh, or improve uh, at APSIG and the other SIGs. Uh, thank you, Amrita. Uh, so now, uh, anybody else? So I think uh, Sajna from Nepal. She's a lawyer, I guess. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, I'm Sajina Karki. I'm a lawyer based in Nepal, basically working on gender-based violence. So when we are talking about violence against women, we cannot separate online violence at the same time. As for Nepal, um, uh, the, the internet users are approximately 16.67 million. And with the increase of, um, uh, in the number of internet users, it, it proves to be a challenge in terms of uh, securing the rights, access, awareness, and um, you know, women are in much vulnerable place. Um, in Nepal, the gender gap or the divide is much more vivid with the um, strong presence of various forms of uh, abnormalities and wrong practices where women empowerment and equal rights are still questions of debate. So, um, and, and, and um, um, online violence against women mostly occurring at the age of 18 to 24, especially in and around their own proximity um, where there seems to be awareness about the definition, but uh, regarding the action and laws, there seems to be a gap of understanding. And several online violence against women um, cases goes unreported, you know, and um, and 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 uh, the major reason behind the, this seems to be the fear of social repercussion as nepal still being a patriarchal society women are supposed to belong to a subordinate group uh, similarly we 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 lack in the proper laws as well so at present we are dealing these cases by electronic transaction act and defamation act um, but having said all these things, it is commendable that Nepal uh, government is launching many awareness campaigns. Uh, similarly, the National Women Commission in Nepal has established uh, um, a 24 hour helpline um, uh, to provide support to survivors of gender based violence. Ani, and and um, I would also like to add one thing that uh, we as an internet, uh, learn internet governance. She cut off. She's dropped off, I think. Dropped off. Oh. So um, uh, since we are running out of time, uh, I'd like to intervene here. And uh, first of all, we appreciate the fact that you put together a presentation. You have demanded your time and got it. Uh, and you put together a presentation, including videos from the women participants. We appreciate the effort that has gone behind it. Uh, I think majority of uh, us are in sympathy with uh, what you're asking for. Just that we do not know how to structure some of these interventions. When you, for example, say that the opportunities for women are limited, uh, the, the whole application process is not uh, limited in any way. If women can qualify, they can come up. There is no bar. But this may be a perception that we have. We may be wrong. I don't know. So I, at this point, I leave the floor open. I think uh, one, two, three, four. Thank you, Satish. I, as a chair, Mr. Satish has said that we are all for the participation of women in a big numbers in these international or national forums, whether it is governance or whether it is ICT. So what, uh, how to do that? I think the issue is that, you know, it is not just discuss here and go back and then Again, next time we come back to the same situation. I think we each, each one of us in our own country should identify those women, uh, you know, activists or those who are in this space, and those who can work, those who can, we can inf informatize them that look, this kind of things are going on. Many times they are not aware that 
unless you tell them specifically that this event is there, this this seminar is there, this uh, you know uh, discussions are going on. So unless they participate and then you know educate them to some extent that they understand what is the process which is there. So I think little hand holding in the beginning, but slowly one after the other there will be a chain link. I believe in each country can develop this kind of process and it can come up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I was part of the uh, pre-nominating uh, team of the 2007 fellowship. Uh, Professor Chong had given us the responsibility where Nadira, Amrita and me, we did that. And our priority was women first. We prioritize women. So most of the times, uh, you know, it's not that they're, they're, we don't look for that, we prioritize that, but there are very less applications. And what we look for is APSEG has a certain standards. So uh, that is the reason why we need to look for the national SIGs where we have to work on these issues and then come up, you know. What you have in initiated is a pioneering step, you know, the, the, the way you have done it, recorded those voices, because this is the gap and you bridged it, right? So we highly appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we are certainly there uh, from the team as well as we will support and voice the issues of gender. Thank you. That was my experience that I shared. So uh, one comment, because we are having that problem in Sri Lanka to gap that, uh, to bridge that gap, we had first ever women IGF in Sri Lanka because that is only not for the women. So we wanted to witness our male counterparts that we have a problem. So we need to have a platform to raise our voices and we need to witness others that there was a, such a pop, there are such a problems and suggestions from you all and help from you all. That is what I wanted to do it here as well because otherwise that won't uh, come up in any way. Hello. Okay, so um, first, I really appreciate what um, Amrita presented earlier, like the table, because um, for me, gender inclusion and women's participation is not just in terms of the number of participants, but it also must include the participation or engagement with speakers at, as well with um, those who are included in the management or the steering committees. So I think that's one very valuable point for me. And I think just to share what has worked in the Philippines um, experience so far is that there really should be um, proactive, um, to reach out proactively to women, like to women's groups. I'm sure there is not a lack of women's groups in our respective countries. There are associations, there are groups of women, and we must really um, reach out proactively to them. And I guess I must also point out that um, the experiences of women and the needs of women are not um, homogeneous. So, for example, the needs of rural women are different from those from the urban poor, from IT professionals who are females. So, um, these specific sectors, I think we could start looking at um, women in those sectors and reach, really reach out to them. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, ladies, for your enlightening uh, talks and comments. Uh, may someone from the APC organizing committee help me out here? And I'm just curious. Uh, I, I read somewhere that there were 138 applications. Uh, how many of them were women? Can someone tell me? So, uh, if, if there were 20% of the applicants were women, we see that there is about 40% of the women, uh, about 30%, uh, not 40%, about 30% of them are the uh, particip participants uh, are represented here. Uh, same, and, and Shridip raised very valid question, very valid point, that uh, national SIG, women, uh, this platform is, the leadership form. And someone who comes here has to have attend 
a regional SIG or IGF and has to have the information, basic know-how of the IG processes and what IG is. Uh, I sit as the, at the PK6 steering committee as well, uh, so I speak from the experience we receive very less applications and we adopt a number of ways to, to outreach uh, the public. We use Facebook, Twitter, uh, even print media as well to outreach the students. We, we uh, circulate the information through universities. So, uh, so uh, the responsibility agreed that uh, gender uh, needs to be balanced but uh, some effort has to be taken from the from the gender side as well uh, we be a, we are talking about the women or or some other gender but there has to be uh, some initiatives uh, so that uh, steering committees and the organizing committees because it's all the volunteer work they can do so far uh, this is my comment thank you thank you very much Sadeep. so please sanya so my uh, question is, we actually have very good gender balance for lecture, lecturers pool this year, hop up. How could it be possible? <laughs> so like, uh, how could it be possible? Do you think uh, like uh, uh, expert area already we have that kind of a balance? No, in real world situation, we don't have that balance. 50-50, no then that was possible because uh, we were strongly invited. But you can't invite uh, someone that isn't qualified. So you really need to find the, like, if you want, if you think uh, gender balance is really important, and I think so, because that's uh, one of the most important part to, to like, uh, improve uh, digital divide. So if you really want to see the change, you have to find the women who are doing very well in like uh, the area and then invite them actively. Right, thanks for that input. Yeah. Uh, I guess I have to make a, make a comment here. Uh, since we are in, a, this is APSIG, uh, either uh, you and or a monitor, uh, please do the, some analysis this as an occasion. And Amrita also knows the, what we did last year. Actually, she, she attended the last two years. So the, you have a very good information. After those data, I just analyzed here. Okay, uh, for general participant application, we are fairly even. Actually, we had a more accept more women than the men. You can check it, okay? Don't go too superficial. Okay, problem, <clears throat> and this is, uh, we have to solve it. Okay, uh, first, I just look at it here. Uh, we give a priority to the case study session proposal. No woman proposal. It's, uh, anybody can make a proposal, okay? This time, none from woman. Uh, this we have to solve it. Okay, only the male uh, submit a proposal. So the naturally, this all those are male dominant. Now, don't say this is a dis discrimination. Okay. Second uh, is the uh, <clears throat> I just look at down uh, IGF application. It's a similar tone. Not much application for the woman. Okay, this one's something we had to work. And, uh, and uh, it may not be easy. Okay, otherwise, like how many fellow from the APSIG to the uh, uh, IGF? Yeah, for sure, because woman did, not many women wrote a proposal. So naturally they are not selected. Okay, and uh, this is something we had to solve. And the lecturer, uh, you, you may say this may be exception. No, no, not really. The way I see is uh, uh, last year, this year, it's pretty much the same. Uh, it's fairly even. Okay, not intentional, it's fairly even. Then uh, like their evaluation, 
It's a fairly again even. Of course, like because of Jim Foster, there are no women the, the best lecturer, but uh, that's uh, coincidental. Always number two was a woman. So the, I guess we're doing okay. And uh, but here in this com by now it's a community, okay? Uh, case study session, the, all those proposal, it's hard work. Okay, the only one we are getting is uh, pretty much male dominant. And this we have to solve somehow. Okay, encouragement may not be good enough. So, thank you very much. So I think uh, one of the things that I can get from this discussion is that our outreach, both for outreach. applicants and for case studies and other kind of categories, has to be much stronger uh, from the women's side. So perhaps uh, maybe the women can tell us, not just now, but uh, as we go ahead, as to how to strengthen this whole uh, outreach process. So in Sri Lanka, we are, uh, through ISOC, we are having the program called Girls in Tech. So we are empowering the girls, school girls, and the university students to how to do the coding through the Raspberry devices. So likewise, that, that's what we are asking from the community. So we need to have more technical things to train women and more advocacy programs to participate on these sort of workshops and their talents and inventions to show up. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, we, uh, we understand the need for uh, gender balance. And uh, we have taken the first step here today. And we, will, we hope that as we go forward, we will continue to discuss, come back to this point, and ensure that we try our best to ensure the balance required. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, thank you, Sagarika and the team. So with this, uh, we come to the uh, end of the all meeting. There is this one announcement. Uh, we have just gone through the tabulation of the votes for the uh, K. You want to announce? Please go ahead. Yep. So thanks to K for managing the whole election process. Uh, and she will be now uh, announcing the winner of the election. Yeah, you don't need to read out the votes, just the winner would do. So we had uh, seven no nominees for this year. And five, five, five. Five, sorry, five. five nominees for this year. And out of the five, it, uh, the, the group decided that it's uh, Mubashir that is our best alumni for So Mubashir wins. Congratulations to Mubashir. Mubashir wins the... Mubashir Sargana. Sargana. So thanks to the All Sig uh, Chairs group, which uh, uh, kind of helped in the process of identifying the slate. And thanks to Kay for organizing the election. And congratulations to Mubashir uh, and everybody else who stood for the, uh, the, the election. Thank you very much.